Really good evening, everybody. Uh, this is my second stream for today. Granted, I was on the Dutch Oven uh, with Victor in the Legacy uh, Gaming DM, or uh, some variation of that naming. If I know I got it wrong, so I'm sorry. But I'm, tonight, I am being joined by Omen Al and whoever else decides to show up because we are talking about the fantastic topic of whatever the hell we could think of. Um, if it's making fun of politicians, I'm all for it. Everybody's, everybody's a target. Fuck it. You, you know what? As long as everyone's a target, so we can't do that. But I'll be honest. Politics, it's just not as much fun. It's I, not. I it's no, nor is, I mean, there is conversations that were basically not allowed at the dining room table growing up. Uh, religion, politics, anything sexual. Uh, church, oh, I said politi- I said relig- religion, you know, and money, just things that, you know, people don't really talk about or shouldn't talk about to a certain degree. Now it's like, well, we're not selling any newspapers. Let's go bash on the president or whoever. You know, you know what, though? I, my mother mentioned this is when they said, yeah, you never talk about religion, politics or money. And my mother said, what do people talk about? Because, you know, she grew up Greek. So <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. And so I was like, all right. But but I was used to always the discourse, uh, you know, people going back and forth. And I think that's that's the problem nowadays is everyone wants to yell at an echo chamber and then they yell at each other. I, I mean, you know, I know Max does it too, but uh, look, I'd rather hear, you know, tell me why you believe in something. I mean, that's about as far as for politics, because you'll find out people have different experiences and different roles in life. And, and you begin to understand as a human being and anyone that's actually listened to Daryl, I think it's Daryl. Is it Johnson or Davis? Anyway, um, the, the the black man that goes around talking to KKK people and making them friends, and then they give up and they stop being racist. I'm like, well, isn't that the is that what you want to do? Is when you start talking to people as human beings, they start reacting like you're a human being, and then the world gets a better place. And that's all I care about. I'd rather go out and do barbecue, or in this case, we start off with ice cream. <laughs> right? Yeah, there is nothing wrong with a good barbecue. Jesus, there's a place in Texas. I think there's two places in. Uh, Texas that have are on the board as being the best uh, barbecue places in America. Uh, for the life of me, I can't remember what the hell either one of them is, but I know they're there. Franklin's, I think, is one well one well known. Yeah, Franklin's. I think Franklin's is definitely one of them where you basically have to be there like three hours before they even open. You're standing in line. Then when they're out, they're just out. Sorry, thanks for coming. That happened, actually. There was a place uh, called Snow's Barbecue in Lexington at one point, which is considered the best meat barbecue in Texas. No, this yeah. Was, this was 15 years ago or so. And I, I drove all the way out there, and I had it, and I went, eh, it's okay. <laughs> it, I, I can't tell you the difference between great barbecue and good barbecue, but I, I can tell you the difference between bad barbecue. <laughs> so You find that in Illinois. No, um, actually, that's not fair. We There was a place down in Peoria uh, called Big O's. And it was ran by this gentleman that was from the South and he's been there. He was there for a long time. He closed down and it was more in the shadier end of Peoria, unfortunately, but his barbecue was outstanding. His sweet potato pie was amazing. His slaw was, you know, of course, amazing. And just because he did not have the, Particular, the area he was in was rough. It was rough and impure. I'm not going to say it wasn't. And his clientele were not exactly country club people. Uh, it just he just went out of business. But that's you know how some of these restaurants are. You know, even going to musicians, you might find the world's best guitarists out on the street. You know, just playing for music and it won't get a head of anywhere in the music because he doesn't have a certain look to him. Which I, I think is bullshit because have you seen half those guys back in the 60s and 70s? <laughs> Holy shit. Let's talk about Kansas. Wow. There's some scary people in that. I, you know, I, and I've been through the South and it depends in some of the areas, you know, like I know Memphis barbecue and everyone likes different stuff. I, I prefer a dry rub when I was young. I used to like the wet. Rub, yeah. But I went over, I think it was one of the first times in Chicago. I, I guess I went with a, with a date or something. I can't remember. I mean, we went over this place that it specifically said, our barbecue is not fall off the bone. And all I could think is, what's the point? 
the, the other the other thing is I don't like a lot of sugar, <laughs> and and um, I guess it's North Carolina and a lot of those areas they'll they'll use the sugar rubs. Oh and, yeah, and yeah. I'm. I, I don't like the, the taste of sweet for the most part, unless it's intended to be sweet. I, I don't like sweet and savory. I either want savory or sweet. I don't like the combination normally. There was this uh, McDonald's version of a barbecue place called Sonny's. Uh, they're a franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I came to the States, when during the summer, I'd come to the States and go spend some time down in Florida with my aunt and uncle. And we go to Sunday, uh, 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 we go to Sonny's, probably twice a visit, you know, and I don't know. Their ribs were amazing, but I tell you what, the moment I go in there, I want the all-you-can-eat ribs. Uh, yes. Yes, please, with extra slaw and the salad bar that comes with bacon. And I was all about it. Was it great ribs? No, but it was – It. I don't know if it just falls under that, you know, tradition, this is what we do scenario. But it was some of the best ribs I ever had, for being some of the crappiest ribs I ever had. <laughs> what was it? Quantity has a quality all of its own. Yeah, um, I, I I enjoyed um, for ribs. I mean, there's a good place here locally called Chefs, and I I got it. And of course, it's like thirty. Well, it was thirty dollars a pound. I'm afraid to see what it is now. But <laughs> but 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 I was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm only a huge fan of ribs because my father had some ribs years ago. Now these were fall off the bone, really fantastic. Um, I, I can't, so I was like, so I became a big fan of those. But it, it, it's interesting where uh, also you have blacks down here. I always forget blacks and smithies. Um, but I know I heard I've heard of smithies before. Well, Lockhart has blacks and smithies, and there's another one out there. But Lockhart's well known for its barbecue. But I, I, one of the reasons I like barbecue is because I tend to eat carnivore, and because. Oh, yeah. It makes it very easy because I'll just get a la carte. Um, the other thing is when I would be driving for work, it would be down three hours. Well, if I don't have any carbohydrates, I tend not to get sleepy. So it made it really easy to eat without falling asleep at the wheel. So that always helped. I, I Traveling, I think jerky is some of the best things because it has protein, zinc, a lot of things you have, and it doesn't spike your insulin. And everybody's like, but it's the smell. I'm like, well, you just need to get over it. I, I think it smells wonderful, depending on what uh, you Yeah. I, I, uh, uh, Bucky's. Yeah. Bucky's has a good deal usually on uh, beef jerky, which is, for the longest time, when I was going to just go to College Station, you'd see this, you'd see these signs that say, 87 miles to Bucky's. And then you drive another one, like, you know, 54 miles to Bucky's. Like, what the hell is Bucky's? Well, now they're all along I 35 and they're actually out towards. Uh, I guess there's a franchise near my, uh, not too far from my parents, I guess about an hour away in Alabama. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it puts, it, it's, it's a massive gas station is the only way to put it. It has like 120 pumps or more. And it has barbecue and a lot of other stuff. So, um, I, I think my favorite is, yeah, they're, they're actually really good to go to. The food is really uh, the cleanest bathrooms you can generally find. Bucky's in Tennessee now. That's supposed to be the biggest Bucky's in America. Oh wow! Some yeah. variation of that. I could be wrong. Well, I know when I was driving. I can't remember if it was Iowa. I forgot where I was driving, but one of the places they actually have you know dentists. Now that's not a Bucky's, but people forget that there's there there are some of these. Uh, and I remember as a child, you go over to see the rest stops. And yeah. Like, I have to go to the bathroom. And you're just like. Um, it's terrifying to go in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did that to my son one time. He's like, I have to stop. I said, can we wait? No, I have to go now. I said, all right, go in and talk to the guy. And, and he came back and it looked like he had PTSD, like he was from shell shock. <laughs> <You know, laughs> this, this poor eight-year-old kid's like, ah. <laughs> well, son, just be glad you're a boy. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, no, I've been, yeah, I've been to my share of sketchy, uh, sorry, my Discord's blowing up. I even have streamer mode on where it should be blowing up, but still is. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, it's table breaker stuff, and I'm like, they're talking about what we should talk about. I'm like, I don't know. Let's. Everybody else has done, you know, religion. Let's talk about religion. Let's piss everybody off. Uh, probably shouldn't. Probably. No, you know what? Though I think the problem is, is that we can, you know, sorry if we go. So if we'll talk about anything, you know, we have oh, yeah. religion now. 
it's not the problem, I think, necessarily with religion. It's when you start trying to apply real-world religion to your fantasy games that you're going to offend people. No one really cares if you're, you know, religion X of, you know, some fantasy, you know, it's not offensive. And it's the thing is that people want to fight. Of course, we're going to steal. I, I, I had a, I had, well, he was a, it was a colonel one time. He said, steal shamelessly. I said, yes, there's nothing wrong with combining this aspect of this religion and this aspect of this religion and making a whole new religion and, and going through with it. And then uh, cosmology and stuff. I said, that's, but in fact, I prefer that because it's less likely to offend someone if you go, but it's not your religion. Well, well, I see elements. Well, that's fine, but it's not your religion. You're going to see elements in everything because if we didn't do it, then we have super fantastic gonzo world where, where no one has any um, framework. And you really kind of want that framework to have a world that's somewhat believable in a fantasy world. So that's that's why I look at it. I I kind of had the hot moment a couple weeks ago on uh, Max's show where I don't believe I don't want the Christian God in my game. Uh, you know, there's over what thirty five thousand different branches of the Christian Church out there, and my ver my version of Christianity very well could be different than what you, different than what yours is. And I'm not being trying to be disrespectful to anybody. I mean. For example, me and this other person on YouTube, he's an Orthodox Catholic, and I'm a Roman Catholic. One of us thinks there should be a Pope, and the other one doesn't agree with the Pope. Now, but, imagine if you have that at a table. I, well, you know, speaking, yeah, well, exactly. Well, speaking of religion, you know, there's four different types of Catholic, and everyone knows Roman Catholic, but there's like, oh, Byzantine Catholic, there's Ethiopian Catholic. They're all under the Pope. And then, like, my mother was um, Orthodox. Now, I know you're referring to D.M. James, which is what the Xerxes budget knockoff was from. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, see, you call me Xerxes. But, uh, no, the uh, – but but that's what – and I don't disagree, you know, but at the end of the day, I don't want to intrude. Because one is you can offend someone somewhat, unless you're playing a truly historical game. Um, but the other part is, is I, I get to fantasy to get out of some of these things. And, and you should take elements. Now, if you really want to go into it, and I think this is the other problem people have with any kind of religion, is I'm going to bring this up. Is I really enjoyed Vampire because it took a lot of the Judeo-Christian myths and put them in there. But they did enough of a spin, it's not the same. You know, and, and I was okay with that. It was, you know, take, take whatever you have, just make it worse. Um, assume that there's, you know, nefarious forces behind the scenes, and, and that's Vampire. Um you know, in the world of darkness, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm all right with that. But what I don't want to do is come over and say, well, your God is this and, and have players fight. And, you know, oh, I, yeah. I, I mean, I hate saying this. It's, I know Dolly Pops is an atheist is where she goes into it. I don't like this. Yeah. I just want to avoid that entirely. I would rather you say, look, your, your, your powers come from a God. We're not talking about real world. This is what's going to go on. Otherwise we would take clerics out. And there might be, you know, a little fudge. I said, no, that's the that's the whole point. The other, the other point is with D&D, &D, magic is so integral to that world to somehow remove the reason for it. Just feel it cheapens it to me. I, I really there should always be a reason. Yeah. I, you know, I ran campaigns where dragons uh, uh, were the uh, reason for magic. So when the last dragon died, the last known dragon died, magic stopped and it's been over 200 years no one knows magic and the campaign uh somebody in the campaign uh found a dragon's egg and didn't know you know and you know and that was the whole basis of the campaign kind of um sounds like dragon lance if you ever look at the i've never read dragon lance so so the first module the cleric had no spells and, 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 I, and I know I'm not a huge fan of the modules because they were going through it, but the idea was we're introducing you to this world, and I had never read any of the books. But, but that was part of it. And when they find this dragon, which were all supposed to effectively be gone, no one believed in them. Then they start getting, you know, they find like these discs that, that talk about the gods. I was like, oh, and I'm okay with that. I, I, I you right. know, and, and no one minds it. Well, I, I you know, it's, I, I, I have no problems with that. I want, I want, players to feel engaged. I want them to go in there. I want them to enjoy it. I don't need them to, you know, especially if you have religious players, it's one thing to go, this is obviously 
fake, but when you start making them go through the rituals and stuff, I, no, I want that off a little bit. Um, you know, if, if you want to play as a monotheistic, I'm okay with it. I, I don't care one way or the other, really. Um, in fact, you don't even really have to name your god so much, as, you know, but... Right, I, right. You know, the, uh, and people have different ways of looking. I always want to look at it as, you know, here's God in the center, and everyone comes around in a big giant circle, well, I guess a sphere, and they're all looking at different points. And they could, and then we all know generally the I- idea of it, so we create a framework, but we may not be getting the whole thing. And I said, okay, that's fine. Um, I said, but of course, if you have different viewpoints, like just if you're around a mountain, you can see things differently. Right. Oh, yeah. It's kind of the argument, uh, the elephant argument. You stick eight blind monks in a room with an elephant. One fills its tail and says, well, God must be like this. One fills its trunk and so forth and so on, dot, 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 you know. And I just, there's enough complications in D&D or Pathfinder or whatever system that you're running that even, I'm not talking about the game itself. I'm just, you know, the X amount of people sitting at your table with their own thought process and their own personalities that my variation of a Christian might be different than your variation of what Christian looks like. And right there, it could be a fight on site because we're, t- we're touching about something that is sacred uh, to a lot of people. And I, ju- I just don't want it. I-, I don't want that headache. Yeah, I don't want to fight about all of this stuff. It's one thing of the, the don't get me wrong, I don't I don't mind sitting down and say, well, let's 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 go look at the idea of God and, and I don't mind discussing it with people, but they have to be really secure in their faith. But the other point that comes to us, I'm playing a game. Any anything that reduces outside conflict, which is the whole reason why we go, no politics at the game table. I don't care if you like Trump, you hate Trump, or whatever, leave it outside because Trump doesn't exist in our world. In, in our fantasy world, let's right? Go, you know, I have bigger things to worry. If you're worried about whatever the media is screaming at versus your character who is in a world where actual orcs are burning villages, I'm going to worry about the orcs burning my villages. <laughs> the, the the great orange savior is not going to save my village. You know, I'm I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> or Sleepy Joe is not going to pull a, a Van Winkle. You know, it, it's not going to happen. But yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> well, at that point, it's like, unless you're really going to do, how do I want to put this? Is if you ever watched uh, Sam and Max or some of these other cartoons where they make. Oh, them. yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry about that. Ah. <laughs> Politics. No, I, I think, no, I think um, I've had allergies and I went to a concert last night. So Yeah, who did you see? Uh, Ramstein. Anyone. <sighs> Anyone that goes, well, they, they, they're famous ones, Duhast. Duhast. Um, Duhast, Mish. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I've heard a few times. <laughs> anyway, the, the, the first hour they had, well, I guess it was the first 35, 40 minutes, they did the pianist, who yeah. were two French pianists coming in, playing their music on the piano. And they did a fantastic job. And then they had Ramstein. And I'll tell you this much. Those guys go all out. It was two and a half hours nonstop. I mean, they didn't even take like a pause of 10 minutes or anything. It was, we do one song and like 30 seconds or a minute later, they do the next song. And then they had, you five. know how much cardio they would have to do to do that shit. Man alive. Well, one of the guys, he was on a treadmill as he's doing this stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> as he's going through now, I, I, we did see him get off and so that. And then they had uh, fireworks. I mean, it, they had the big explosions come out that they started bringing out flamethrowers and, you know, we kind of had the nosebleed seats, and you could feel the flames. You know, so it was it was pretty intense, especially in the Alamo Dome. Um, it was getting so thick that I couldn't even see across. Um, Jeez, <laughs> wow, I had a... Hollywood for ugly people. Anyway, well, thanks, James. <laughs> I sent him the link. He could jump in any time. No, I actually had friends that went. Uh, Yo, uh, my friend Yos and his wife. I think they're married. They're not. They're not married. They're on their way to be married, or some variation of that. That was uh, went and showed pictures, and I'm like, "That's cool." Uh, they're from like Georgia. I'm like, "But I'm, I'm, um, yeah, nope, nope. I'm not going. It's not. It is, this is basically not a stab at Texas. I just I had no interest in going through what one." Two, three, four, Illinois, da, 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 a few other states that go to a concert. I, I just, uh, I can't do it. No, well, my friend's wife, she wanted to go. 
this is pre-COVID. They apparently got pushed all the way back till now. <laughs> That's how long it went. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So, I, but but she was busy at work, and um, you know he keeps you know she. It was like, hey, you want to go? Sure, I'll, I'll go out there and. Um, but but, but I'm not. I mean, I'm not going to say no to seeing Rammstein. Don't get me wrong. You know, they were never really, you know, on my bucket list bands. But I appreciate their music for what it is. And But if they played up in Chicago, Illinois, I, I, I'd probably go. If they played in St. Louis, I'd probably go. St. Lu- uh, this is Springfield, probably go. Texas? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> no. I mean, I could say, well, I'm going to go to Texas. I can go see... Bruce, uh, which will piss off Shadow because I beat him to it. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. But no, I have absolutely no interest going across that many border, uh, that many state lines to go see a concert. No, you have to. Well, if you didn't do it, do it. Go all the way. Oh, look, there's a concert, and then there's this, and then there's. Oh, yeah. No, I'm in Texas yeah. for the next week. Why are you going to Texas? Well, originally in Ramstein, but you know, I. Uh, you know, you live somewhere out in Texas, and then he's got Bruce that's somewhere in Texas. So, I mean, there's reasons to go, but for my sole reason to go see a band that I'm really not that interested in to begin with, that's a hard sell on the financial side of it. Oh, he's going to go see Elvis Costello there, James L. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I'll be honest, is. And my friend always makes fun of me because I go to these concerts. And I put in earplugs. Like I'm not going to go deaf. Uh, <laughs> no shit. And, and and people are like, well, you, you know, it's the old geek was going, well, you got to get the full experience. So now, no, my father has tinnitus um, from artillery shells, and yeah. now I don't want that. Um, I had as a kid. I don't talk about it very often, but I've had a couple things blow up around me as a kid. Um, yeah. And uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I don't do, I don't do loud concerts, and I don't do crowds. Well, in in the seats, because I know you're a bigger guy, and I'm, I mean, I'm not a small guy either. But well, I'm fat. I'll admit to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but, I mean, but the seats get smaller and smaller, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, uh, man. I just, mm, man. It's like getting on an airplane these days. I have to pay for two tickets because me and one of my cheeks. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I got a car. I'll drive. Well, I, I did that. And actually, my son, who's, who's, who's real thin, I said, do you want to drive? Because we went up to, to Washington. Do you want to drive? Or do you want to, or do you, well, do you want to fly or drive? I'm like, all right, let's 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 drive. And my, he went, hey, I'm sorry. He said, he said, let's drive. Like, Are you sure? It's going to be five days up there, five five or six days there and then five days back he's like yeah let's do it and i went uh so there's four thousand miles round trip um just right but it was good i mean you get to see the, the parts of the country you just never see them and i don't care what anyone says and this is why you know going back to games here um i think that travel mechanics are so important because people have no conception of just how vast the united states is until you drive it um oh it's america's huge Absolutely huge, and you're absolutely right. I, I agree with you. I don't think people get it until they see it for themselves. And you get to see so many different areas. It, you know, if I we went up through New Mexico, which was the highland uh, high plains, which I never really right. being there. So we would drove up to Northwest Texas, you know, towards Lubbock, and then we went west into New Mexico and Colorado. So you get to see the Snow Peak Mountains. Then we went into Utah. And then you get to see um, Oregon and the southern part of Portland, uh, southern part of Idaho. Um, and then we hit the, the center part of Washington. I've been to Seattle before. And then we went to the east side. Then you come through um, Idaho and Montana. I think Montana is one of the prettiest states and it has a lot of variation. And then we come down south on the eastern side. I'll, I'll tell you this much. The, the, I guess I think that's called the Great Desert. People have no conception of just how big it is for certain things and um and of course, it was dry, so it was. It, it's interesting on everything, um, but but it gives you an idea, especially if you're ever in your games of places to be. Um, yeah, I mean, I've traveled a lot via because of my aunt and just boredom. Um, I, I love you know I love jumping in a uh, road trip. I, I will road trip it for 
basically any damn reason. I mean, if I could financially make it happen, let's do a road trip. But anymore, it's either Tennessee or uh, Pennsylvania. I, I seem to travel to only because I have events there, uh, things with people I know go there uh, for the sport, man. So I, you know, kind of go where you know people, right? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think Pennsylvania is an absolutely gorgeous area depending on the time of year. Um, you know, so you, you've got that. Um, Tennessee is very similar. But, you know, the, there's a big difference when all of a sudden you drive and you hit the, the Rockies versus the Appalachians. Um, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, people just – and I think that's some of the advantage that you have in Europe is the ability to travel through multiple countries and cultures. You, you have different cultures here, but it's – but everyone speaks the same language, so. <laughs> yeah, it does help. Uh, Connell, come to Australia. I'll get a car, and we will. And we will do my favorite road trip: old cemeteries and fancy. You know, I am not opposed to that idea. Only I've looked into tickets to get to Australia, and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel I feel hurt, James L. No, um, no, I understand that. I, that was actually one of the reasons I became an engineer, which was funny enough. I said. I hated my job. I said, I'm going to save up enough money so I can spend six months in Australia. And then I came to the realization, what am I going to do when I come back? I said, well, I'm going to do that. I might as well, you know, I said, I don't want to go back to my old job. So that that, that encouraged me to save money to go to college instead. So I, I missed out on going to Australia. Well, I got, uh, I was, in, I just graduated from high school and, you know, I was about ready to join the armed service while I was, you know, I had that in mind. And I already went. And they said no. Uh, they're just sorry between uh, being flat footed and taking railing. It's just a no go. I'm like that. that I get it. Whatever. Um, so my, I didn't tell my aunt this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. She's like, well, I know you think about joining the service, and I think it's very patriotic, but because she doesn't want, you know, like like you know, most parents or aunts or family members, they don't want to see their nephew's family, you know, get hurt. And once you sign that, you know, sign that check. I mean, that's one hell of a check that you don't know if it's ever going to get cashed. And I, uh, I had, when I was living in Germany, I had a friend that went, um, he went over and did the Gulf War, which had happened a few years previously. Right. The first one in 91. And this guy said, uh, he was a sergeant. In the meantime, I guess this person was like, a specialist or so, and they're crying. Oh my god, I enjoy the military to go to war. Oh my god, oh my god. And and the, the and he said, Well, guess what? You got the bonus. <laughs> uh, so, my aunt's like, Well, if you don't sign up and all this, I will pay for you to go wherever you want to in Europe. So, is this Jack? Back back. What is this Jack here? Yeah, this is Jack. All right, yes, then. where's your old man? Um, cooking. Oh, that's him coming over for dinner. <laughs> well, back to ice cream. No. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I'm like, okay, I guess I I will back. I can backpack. That sounds fun. I'm still in pretty. I'm still in pretty good shape, and you can backpack Ireland fairly easy enough. I mean, there's enough hostels and places like that where you can make it work for yourself. And so I'm like, okay, so I do Ireland. I haven't been to Ireland. I saw a bunch of people I haven't seen in years, had a really good time. And she's like, well, it's like the last day there. She's like, is there anywhere else you'd like to go? I'm like, uh, Italy? <laughs> and she's like, are you going backpack it again? I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Well, I backpacked Italy, and once again, I had a great freaking time. And she's like, "Well, I'm so glad that you, you know we did this, and you know now keep your side of the deal." And I'm like, um, "This was years later." I told her, "You know, I'm like they weren't going to take me to begin with, Aunt Deb." And she's like, "Really?" She's like, "Yeah, but I wasn't going to go to ruin a trip to Ireland." She's like, she got mad, and she didn't talk to me for about two days, and she just called back, just laughing. She's like, "You know what?" If I was 19, that not, I would have done the same damn thing. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think those are those are great. Um, I, I really recommend anyone in, growing up, as I was around all the military, so when I heard people never traveled, I went, what? Um, yeah, so that's, 
but but it is kind of a privilege to see some things and, and things have changed oh, yeah. a lot. I, I I remember going to Russia in '93. Hi, um, man. Russia is a whole different creature. It well, I'll tell you this much: of all my places, it, I was in. Um, and then I went in the 2000s to Hungary. I like Hungary. If anyone wants to go anywhere, Hungary is awesome. The food is great. Uh, if you like German food, just imagine German food with actually some flavor and spices. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, I, well I, grew up, like I said, I grew up Greek. So I yeah, no, I, 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 the, I know what, I mean, I don't know what your diet looks like, but I know what the Greek diet normally contains of. And yes, you, you guys have this thing that I like to call flavor in your cooking. <laughs> Um, that's not salt and pepper. I actually realize that. How many cultures seem to realize that flavor is something that you want in your food? Actually, no, I saw a really interesting study, Jack. And this was years ago when Scientific American actually used to be a worthy magazine. Um, hmm. they, they were doing it. They were showing them the spices. And the spices increased the further south you went. So they think that it actually has to relate to the inhibition of bacteria growth on food. So, um, or viruses as well. So they notice like the ones in Scandinavia where there's not really a problem because it's generally cool versus places all the way in like India and even in the United States. The further south you went, the, the spicier the food became. And they think a lot of that is the inhibition of, uh, of bacterial and viral growth. That actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's why, it's probably a similar reason why a lot of more southern regions have more like faster and more colorful cultures, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah. The more well, northern regions are more bland and blue and gray. <laughs> I, I, what is that? Lufka fish or whatever? No, Luke, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. I won't make it. Don't ask for it. I'm not going to do it. There's a lot of Jewish food out there I will. I will make. Uh, I used to work for a Jewish family, so I kind of got used to their dietary restrictions, which is fine, you know. Everybody, everybody has a thing. And the grandma was like, you know how to make this? I'm like, no. And I looked into it, and I went back to her. I'm like, ma'am, I can make you anything, but I will not make that. Just like um, stocking of food. is I, Not that I like hot food. No, I have a pretty good story about Pace Picante extra hot sauce one time. But um, I, I really enjoy the etched chili queso. Oh. Uh, Oh, that it, it's so we have a great supermarket, which I you go from Texas up to up to Illinois. You're like, where are the great supermarkets there? Like there aren't any. You can go to Jewel, you can go to Costco and you can go to um, Whole Foods, but you can't go to any to just one for the entire. Right. Whereas like H-E-B, Japan H-E-B go has some really nice stuff as well as, you know, I bought a black truffle one time from their high end version called Central Market. Um, well. You know, something this big was only 20 bucks at the time. So it wasn't too bad. Mm, I, fl I flavored it up because I'd never had it. I yeah. Like, they tipped the vanilla. So I can, it was $200 a pound. So I can buy that. I flavored it up. My son said it was great. And then he didn't want to eat any more ever. And then I told him it was a fungus and he would never touch it again. It really sucked. <laughs> you liked it before I told you it was a fungus. Um, so there was this TV show. I don't remember what it was on, but it was a TV show called uh, Top Chefs. Mm hmm. And I think it was like the first season they had this guy named David or some variation of that. And he made uh, black truffle macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Uh, hey, Shadow, the link is in the uh, chat above. I'll repost yeah. if you can't find it. Uh, but anyways, and I'm like thinking, okay, that sounds interesting. My grandma, while she was alive, was a big fan of truffles. Um, mm -hmm. So I made it for her. And I, you know, I made proper Italian uh, noodles and all that. And I made it, you know, really nice. And it was the most, it tastes really good. But if I was going to charge somebody for it, 20, uh, 20 bucks a bowl for macaroni and cheese with truffles in it. And I just thought it was so fucking overrated. But she absolutely I loved it. When I was in Iraq, we had one of the guys, and they were talking about truffles. So they were talking about white truffles. And he's like, oh, I have to bring it out. Well, I never stayed long enough to, for them to bring it in. But, but oh, yeah, there was truffles. I'm trying to think of the other one. There's there's the, um, which I used to know a lot of my, my favorite stuff. Like, I like oyster mushrooms. 
Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And what's the what's the yellow one? I can never. Oh well, you're asking colorblind guy what you know a yellow mushroom is, but it it, it kind of pops up like a flower. I I know which one you're talking about. I don't remember the name of it actually either. I know which one you're talking about. I will use that when I'm doing like more of a hunter's um, uh, casserole. Yes. I'm I'm trying to think of. I'm just like, what is it? I I know it's. Yeah, I can't think of the name of it either. And it's not the. And it's not the normal, you know, where it has the bottom. I, I know it's the, has it, the. It flowers up. It flowers. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I. And lion's mane is super cool to look at too. My friend and I got into a bunch of mushrooms. And uh, so I, and I'll be honest, I went into Hungary and I have some morel mushrooms and some lobster mushrooms. I have not cooked. Mm. I had them sitting there for years. Um, at, but yeah, I, I love the look of um, lion's mane. Chanterelles, that's what I was trying to say. The chanterelles, I think, are fantastic mushrooms. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, the chanterelles, we went over and we bought some, but I mean, they're going $50 a pound. And I said, um, whenever I hear people talk about, oh, I can eat vegetarians. Well, I hate telling you this, but my steak costs a lot less. I said, if you want to pay for it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yes. yes. Going vegetarian financially is a headache. Um <laughs> If you want me to be vegan, I'll make you uh, okay. You have to buy the food, and you'll be broke within about uh, within about a month or two. From <laughs> I said because I have to eat what I like; otherwise, it's not going to happen. Um, uh, you know the way that we actually produce meat these days is actually—I don't know if you looked into it. I, I well, I is, am, it I'm, is pretty rough. Well, here's the funny thing: it's 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 the last finishing stage that we're all talking about. Because here in Texas, just like where you are, you can see all of the um, beef cattle. Oh, yeah. And, and so they're out there just fine. It's that last month or two where they give them the silage. And we went by a lot of the um, feedlots. One is, they're, they're, but, a little side note, I'm trying to get, one of my coworkers has a few cattle he's looking at slaughtering. And they would be effectively organic. It's mostly people want them out there. And it's only at the last little bit, that last couple of months where they sell off the steers. And they send them off to the feed house. Other than that, it's been pr- otherwise. Oh, yeah, they, they live- just, that's such a rough <laughs> way to end one life to be treated that way. I, I agree. Um, yeah, I mean those those are, but but I I like to have that. I, I I would prefer getting stuff like that. I know my ex has some um, goats. I, I cabrito. It took me years to find cabrito. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, which is goat. Um, yeah. I mean, I had no problems with a uh, leg of lamb, but you know, now it's all coming from Australia anyway. Went, what? We can't. Yeah, I got lamb, and I got like a rack of ribs, lamb ribs, mm-hmm. in the refrigerator. I'm going to uh, probably cook tomorrow. I don't know quite 100 percent sure what I want to do with them as of yet, but um, I'll probably do a mustard breadcrumb. Uh, sear, oh, uh, they're too big to sear. Uh, oven rust them. That does sound good. All right, back to our little thing of, of you know, since we're talking about food here. Um, I, I made some ice cream a few years ago when I was yeah. trying to make this stuff with sous vide, but I didn't want the normal thing, so I made a cinnamon mint ice cream. Oh, that could be good. I thought it was really good. Um, here's the problem <laughs> it's enough to make one batch. Is like twenty bucks, you know, when you start adding everything in, and you, you know, it, you really need stuff on an industrial size to actually make. Oh it yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, and I used the same thing with raspberries. I made a, you know, actual raspberry um, ice cream as well. Um, well, it's like I was really into, uh, you know, when I got into cooking, I was really, you know, interested. So I had to look out where everything came from, you know, how is it made, and I like vanilla. And vanilla extract is expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, fake vanilla is not expensive. <laughs> but once you looked into what you know, fake vanilla originally came from, it's like I I, I think I'm going to switch to chocolate because <laughs> yeah, I don't like the the concept of eating beaver's ass. Just, just did not work for me. <laughs> I'm oh, sure that uh, I'm more than positive it's not made that way anymore. But <laughs> it's just the idea of it was enough. I'm like, nope, nope, I'm good. Well, what was the, the um, is it the car, I am, 
read the whole book, Carmine or or whatever the which the, I forgot what the red number you know, number red eight or whatever is. Oh, number. that's like uh, cra- crush uh, beetles. Or yeah. Something like that. Yes, I read a whole book on it. Um, you know, I want to talk about some things that if you if you really want to go expand your mind, go read some of those books, which I enjoy reading history. That's one of the reasons I I loved reading about a lot of different topics. I think it was called A Perfect Red. And oh my God, you don't realize on, on all the fighting that occurred and the, the, the trade secrets that came from it and everything else as far as, you know, to get that perfect color red. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. No, I... I yeah. Oh, what's that? Okay. I said, yeah, I agree with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, hey, orange. Orange was another one. Uh, the carrots. Carrots were originally not black, but you know, not orange. A purplish color. From I've seen some of the purplish carrots. Yeah, and because of some king, the or- the orange king or something, a bunch of farmers found a way to make the orange, uh, the carrot orange, and it was. Ten times more appealing to eat that than something looks like it's on its way out. Oh, what is? Um, there's some like two hundred different styles of potatoes. Oh yeah, I've heard of that before. And I don't know if you've ever shopped at Costco. Again, I don't. I, I assume pre order, but you know they'll have those little rustic ones that are purple and everything else. Oh yeah. And so they'll be red and purple. Yeah, I, I enjoyed looking at that. The other one I did this years ago. So I went into work and I buy these um, uh, corn tortilla chips. Like, oh, okay. But I buy the blue corn. So I went into work and all these people would not touch them at all. If I said, well, just try one. And they ate it and like, it tastes like corn. I'm like, yes, it's corn. It's just a different colored corn. <laughs> I just have to laugh at it. Um, because we, we were so used to growing up a certain way that the foods have to look a certain way. And, and you forget that, you know, you've got red corn, blue corn, corn white corn. corn. Multi, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's, and I like the blue corn just because it's different. I mean, the cost is about the same. So, especially whenever you use it with that hatch chili queso. Oh man, that's awesome. Oh yeah, that is good stuff. No, it's just I don't think, and this is not a jab at you, but or anybody else, but I don't really think most Americans know where their food comes from. Oh, uh, if they do know, they don't want to know. Or they just think it's, it, it, I know where my food comes from. Uh, where's that? At the store. I'm like. <laughs> I, you know, well, and, and to be fair on this is, you know, I, 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 I work for government and I work for the Department of Agriculture. So we, we kind of know a little bit more. And, you know, so I, I've been looking at things of, you know, and I bought some farmland. So I like to go over certain areas. You realize there's not a lot of money. There's a little bit of money, but I'll, I'll be honest. I'm never going to make any money off of my farmland. I bought it because I want the land, not not because I think that it's going to it's going to make me any. Oh, money. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you could be wrong the way inflation goes. It, it, it's but I bought it's pomegranates and I have different color and I bought mm-hmm. eight different types of well, four different types of pomegranates and I'm trying to get them to grow. And it's a lot of work. People forget about stuff like that. Um, sorry, my my dryer. <laughs> That's right. Uh-huh. Be quiet, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> I'm forever cussing at mine, so don't feel too bad. Well, my father got me the the oh the Lexus. No, no, no. It's the 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 Apple speaker that's like you know it looks like about the size of a softball. Oh god. Yeah. And anyway, it's 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 fine. But every so often when I'm walking by, <laughs> I'll say, like, "Stop it." Yeah, all you're supposed to be is speaker. Stop trying to do other stuff. Oh, we got, he's back. Oh, uh, Jack? Yeah. Yep. I'm back. I'm feeding a good burrito. Oh, fantastic. Tell your dad if he wants to jump in. I'm not going to say no. Well, I mean, you put up. He's in the chat, but he's in the chat pretty much. He's in somebody's chat 24-7. Yeah, I know. Get one of you guys or the liberal lefty who have salty cracker. Uh, I, I, I like what you said. We're going to try to avoid. I just, I just said that to make him mad. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, my, my son does stuff like that, and his mom's very liberal, and so she'll yell and scream. And, and I said, son, you can't even vote yet. Stop worrying about politics. Focus on yourself. <laughs> I said, because at the end of the day, once you can vote, then start worrying about your politicians. And I will say this as someone that deals a lot with local governments, 
stop worrying about all your national elections. Start focusing on your your local elections because they Space determine. Stuff. I mean, the problem is like I don't think anybody in my town knows who the mayor is. Okay, but that's the whole point. Is I deal with uh, county commissioners a lot of times, and those can be elected. Those can probably elected, like by one guy because nobody, only one guy voted. Well, it, it's it's when you start looking at well, not only that is because less people vote. Your vote matters more. If you're voting for whatever politician yeah. and 80 million votes, guess what? That's a lot less than the guy who got 400 votes. And, and make sure you vote in your primaries because that's where your vote really matters, those primaries. But anyway, that's about it for my, my political. And I really don't care one way or the other. I just wish people would actually talk about it because, like, here, your county commissioner determines which roads get paved. And what you drive on is probably more important to your daily life. Um, than a lot of other stuff. And, you know, you, you only have a small representation up in Congress at most 1%, basically. It's three out of four out of 535. But, but you know, your, your local people, they determine everything. Your, your oh, yeah. Things, yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and I've, I've, I, and I deal with a lot of these, these people. And because I work with dams, it's important to get funding for those aspects because people don't think about it until something goes wrong. And it, it, it's unfortunate for all of that um, because they do set policies and rules. And, um, you know, that was a problem in Chicago. I just felt like my vote really didn't matter. There were too many people. Well, you're in Chicago. No, it didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, your vote doesn't matter in Chicago. It's going to go blue no matter what. Uh, well, well it's not, no, it's not even uh, Democrat or Republican I'm talking about. It's uh, very so, much just whatever. He, he, no, no, Chicago is a bad. I've been to Chicago. The only good thing about Chicago is that my uncle lives there. Chicago, uh, that's not fair. That's not fair. Chicago has some really good opera houses, have really good playhouses. Some of the world's best restaurants are in Chicago. Chicago has a very rich history. Unfortunately, the local po uh, the local politics and the history of Chicago has kind of shit the bed. I, I will say this much. I met some wonderful and beautiful women in Chicago. Oh, yeah. And they're all so fucking I, crazy. I, I mean, I'll, I'll give them that. Now, here's the problem. And like I was talking, I remember riding with a taxi cab driver or whatever, and we were talking. And he said, um, from, and I, actually, I think there was another lady too. It was basically from, oh, April until October. Everyone's like, oh, Chicago's wonderful, especially during the spring. You know, it's all gorgeous and everything else. And I said, it's that other time of the year. You're like, why do I live here? I don't oh, winters leave. are fucking horrible. Summers are a fucking nasty. Uh, no, no. I used to live in Chicago. I, I, I spent like two, three years in Chicago, and it broke me. I refused. I just nope, nope. I'm good. I'm just not a big city person. I don't want to deal with the traffic. I don't you know. think big cities are very good. I think cities I don't have think a it's I, I, I honestly think some. Uh, it's like. Well, Chicago used to be the biggest butchering, butchering capital of, you know, basically the world uh, at one point, where Peoria, Illinois, which is a town over I am from, was nothing more than, you know, a, a uh, fort, Fort Creek Corps. And we made whiskey here. We made a bunch of stuff here. Then just modern history just happens away shitting on itself. And that's why Peoria in El Chicago looks the way it is. And the only reason why Chicago went crooked the way as fast as it is is because a bunch of fucking Christian women decided alcohol is bad. We no longer want alcohol in our country. If that never happened, Chicago would not. It wasn't just the women this. because the the Women's Christian Temperance Union. Well, yeah. first they weren't just about alcohol. They were about things like women's rights, uh, freaking child support, uh, a bunch of other stuff like labor issues equality, all that stuff. But then the there's this other association, I keep forgetting the name, one by Wayne Wheeler, I believe was his name. I know his last name was Wheeler. And he was like 100% against alcohol. He turned the entire country against alcohol. There's this thing he would do where he would hold like these rallies against alcohol and he would get the workers to hate. the. He convinced the working class that alcohol was a capitalist ploy to keep them down and in, in the dirt and that then he'd go to the workers and convince them that alcohol was turning their factory workers into lazy idiots he'd go to a black rally and tell them that alcohol is a ploy by 
the white racists to keep them down, and they can go to a bunch of white racists and tell them that alcohol is turning black people into brutes. He made every single person hate alcohol. He just take advantage of what they hate and com- mixed it with alcohol so that in their mind, alcohol is tied to that thing that they hate. So that every group, or the majority of people in every group, hated alcohol. I, speaking as a teetotaler, I, you know. It, 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 <laughs> what? You can't be on this show now. <laughs> and in doing so, he destroyed the country for but, but, several but I mean, decades. I understand, you know, the, the, the goals. But at the end of the day, and this is how I feel about most things, the, you know, you're, you're trying to stop one thing and you just made things so much worse. Yeah, well, but, he didn't. It's not like he got rid of alcohol. Because if he just got rid of alcohol, then yeah, you'd have other problems. But the problems that arise weren't because alcohol was disappeared. The problems arise because alcohol was made illegal, so you can't regulate it. And people are just going to sell illegal liquor and have all these houses where people are selling it. You'd have people getting jobs that allow you to have alcohol, so that they get those jobs without want having the proper qualifications nor reasons for wanting them, mostly religious jobs. You'd have people becoming rabbis just so that they could give people alcohol after. There, there was there, there was one of the big things, is, and this is the thing that I, that I really get mad at, and I know that this happened in the 60s as well, is when the U.S. government poisoned the alcohol and killed thousands of people by doing so. Well, oh, shit. Did they, did they put methanol instead of ethanol? Oh, no. And yeah. so, yeah, a lot oh. of people died from that. And, and I'm going, you know, so so to, to save the number of people, we got to let a lot more people die. And I, I hate that attitude. At the end of the day. Wait, wait, wait. How? This, okay, this is a bit of American history I did not know. Whose brilliant idea was this? Oh, I can't. Let's 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 look it up. Sixties. Uh, that's that's Nixon. Uh, well, no, 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 no. That, well, the 60s, no, the sixties wasn't entirely Nixon. The early sixties was JFK. Then after, well, JFK was a fucking drunk, so it wasn't him. Well, no, I'm saying the early sixties <laughs> were JFK. Then after that, it was who was it? I can never remember. Uh, it was Johnson, Johnson yes, for Johnson. a short bit. Then it was Nixon. Yeah, then Which, Johnson, man, that guy had a porn star, a porn star name, L. B. J. I mean, if he was a porn star in uh, South America, he would have made it big. You know, I have it stuck in my head now that Nixon had three terms, and I will never forgive my dad for that. Nixon wanted three terms, but he couldn't get past. Well, he couldn't have gotten three terms. Wasn't the um, amendment that said only two terms already ratified by that point? Well, yeah, yeah. but then, here's, here's the thing. In 60, he would have won the election, but there's a lot of shenanigans that happened, especially in Texas, under yeah. Johnson. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, think, I mean, you know, as much as – I mean, I, I listen – anyone that listens to Robert Barnes, that's a, it, it, that's a really good thing. If you really want to get political, you'll listen to Robert Barnes and him talk about his stories about – and. Uh, Who's Eric Hunley and Dave, uh, Mark Robert? Those are hilarious as he's telling stuff about um, the, the the midget wrestlers and his time. He's hilarious when you listen to it, but he really dug deep into a lot of these conspiracies. Like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of it. Um, alcohol poisoning was generally caused by a lot of the uh, – because the government didn't want people drinking, so what they did is they said – well, if we make it poisonous, people won't drink that alcohol. And instead, you killed a lot of people because of that. Um, All they did was kill people and cause more crime. Yes. Um, an yeah, awful idea. The federal poisoning program by some estimates had killed 10,000 people. So. Jesus. I mean, I suppose if it worked, but the pr- problem is saying I suppose if it worked is that it couldn't possibly work. Because their idea was so incredibly stupid, it made no sense. No, no, it's not that it's stupid, it's immoral. Immoral, yeah, it's stupid, stupid, immoral, and it didn't I, do anything. I don't I think, think it's, I won't consider it to be stupid because under the pretense that it, it worked, it was intentional. That's what yeah, I, well, yeah, no, it was entirely intentional. I, I get that, yeah, yeah but, but I don't view things as stupid. Is is it's the I don't want to put this. Stupidity is when you have un, undetermined consequences, and and this is where we're going to drift a little bit political. Well, this is the problem that I have with government: is that a lot of times it's intentional, 
and they don't care about the consequences. It, it would be very different, like, oh, this is a bad idea. We're going to repeal it because of that. Well, but, Shadow. But, but, yeah, I, that's... Oh, he's here now. <clears throat> of course, uh, he of course he's here. The topic of government gets brought up, and he just jumps right in. No, I mean, I don't want to really get into this too much. No, I, I finished my chow. I'm really? wanting to say, hey, missed you guys. Yeah, we, I, thought, we all we all talked about. I said, hey, uh, Connell, when's the um, when's the shadow, when's the uh, Blade Runner stuff? He said, oh, that's gonna be next week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, Jack. We haven't uh, even watched it. But Jackie had a car show to volunteer for, and. We yep. uh, made a little video. Hope you guys will watch it. I'm gonna post it later. It was it was uh, it was a lot of fun, but it was small. Uh, but the little guy, you know, was a champ, and you know, helped them all. You know, I'm pack gonna, up and everything like that. Even though I don't think I said a single word in that video, I'm gonna have to laugh, Shadow, because if your son's becoming like mine, you're not so little. <laughs> I, I no nope, my... no, nope. he's 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 only a couple inches shorter than me now. And if you look at our very first video, he was like two feet shorter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, my, Oh, I was a total Xbox Live squeaker. I was, uh, no, we're going to say, I mean, I, all, <laughs> the poisoning, though, bothers me. But I want to go back really quick to, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, in the bit, uh, the ambition time. Hey, multi. Um, and yeah, man, I'm getting tired. <laughs> it, it, it's been awakened for me. Uh, there was a company, the uh, wine company, that would sell grape bricks. Uh, they were dried out, crushed uh, gri uh, grapes that looked like a bricks. And they would tell people basically how to make alka wine by saying you don't want to do this, you don't want to do oh, that. Yeah. It was like, I remember that. I remember that. Well, not personally, but... It's like, yeah, I... It's it was a warning label. Warning: Don't put, don't let bricks sit in a water in a cupboard for this exact amount of time. Because if you do that, they'll turn into wine. I, I, I do this. I, I had a, a classmate in college. That's how he got a lot of money. Is he'd get fruit and then he let it ferment, and then he'd sell it off for alcohol. That's all right. Hey, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I haven't had a drink in uh, ten years. Uh, 11, 12 comes next July. It'll be 12 years. And this this December, no, this January, it'll be seven years without anything to drink but water. Uh, I, 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 sorry, sorry, Kyle, you're joking about the whole thing. It's not that I don't drink. I don't drink enough for people to view it as actually being to drink. Because usually if I get a glass, and this is a big glass to be fair, I just want it just enough to cover the bottom so I get a taste. And they're like, oh, no, we're going to stop it. No, I'm not going to drink it all. I hate, I I don't like the way it makes me feel, but I'll taste it like Pennsylvania Dutch eggnog. That's every, pretty awesome. <laughs> every single alcoholic beverage I've ever had tastes awful. Well, it really depends on what you're drinking, to be honest. My, I mean, my, 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 my favorite at the end of a long history of drinking, because I started drinking at like 14, and, I, and not like, not like, you know, yeah. Every once in a while, by the time I was 18, I was drinking a case a day of beer and a pint of Jack. And by the time I was 21, I quit for the first time because uh, I got in a lot of trouble. And uh, my favorite was Malibu rum and either Diet Coke or pineapple juice. And I could drink I, I could drink that shit all day long. Um, my drink of choice right now, if I'm drinking, drinking, uh, is... Okay, Dr. Pepper, a shot of a, a can of, if I'm drinking, drinking, but being socially drinking, it is called a, a it's called a Dr. Martin's, but we kind of messed with it a little bit uh, for flavor. It is a Dr. Pepper with a shot of Irish whiskey with a splash of lemon juice. And I think it tastes really good, but, you know, I'm weird. <laughs> No, no. Yeah, except, is, except for absinthe, I think I've drank everything at one point or another. Oh, I lost. I, just, I, I lost a weekend on that stuff. <laughs> I've, I've lost a couple of weekends too, but not not from drinking. Uh, uh, I, mean, uh, huh. I mean, I've had this this multi collagen, which I'll stick into, along with uh, water and um, heavy cream, and it basically makes them like a milkshake. 
I was a, I went to uh, Nicola Nicola Papa Papa. I can't pronounce this fucking last name to save my life, but a Greek fellow with a traditional Greek last name Papa Papa. I don't know. You're talking about Duke, though. And yeah, yeah, I was one of the groomsmen, and it was my job that if the groomsman before me falls over a white drinking ouzo, I had to drink his share of ouzo. It was some stupid game. I don't know if it's a traditional Greek game or these guys are just freaking assholes. But I'm like the third guy in the line of you know his best man, then the, one of the groomsmen, and I drank. I ended up drinking so much fucking ouzo that night, and I was so pissed the next day because I like black licorice, but I don't like black licorice that much. Oh, and, oh. yeah. Well, I mean, ouzo. When anyone familiar with it, if you add a little bit of water, it turns it milky color. Oh God. Otherwise, it's clear. Um, yeah. Matoxa is the other one that I remember buying. I'll be honest, is I don't mind it for cooking, but other than, and I usually buy a Marsala wine, a dry Marsala wine. What was my ex wife? You said taxes, Metaxa? Um, yeah, ma, yeah, Matoxa. I, I, yeah, it's I, like it's a Greek bourbon. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her hers of choice. No, 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 no. I joked about it, and you know, <laughs> the government's laughing at this. So I used to buy blueberry beer because my ex loved blueberry beer. And this is when, when we worked together and I was going to see my son and to stop a lot of fights. I, it doesn't matter how angry she was. I'd hand her a blueberry beer and she just mellowed out and became super nice. <laughs> so I was like, I would whatever take I mean, I, I okay. six pack and that was the best $8 I spent every couple of weeks. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I, that's, uh, but but yeah, I have to laugh because my son doesn't like drinking either, which is good. I mean, I've offered you, know, you can taste a little bit, you know, nothing else. But his favorite thing to do is find an empty beer bottle and wash it out and then drink water out of it. <laughs> so, hey, real oh, quick, real yeah. quick. Uh, uh, multi, what's happening, buddy? Um, if you want to get off the soda, do what we do. We take, uh, you know, like your, your typical bottles of water, you know, like 16 ounce or whatever, and freeze them till they're almost frozen. Or like half frozen, freaking awesome! It, it, it once you get to a certain point of of drinking water, you know, like regularly, sodas and things like that have become just they, they become too sweet. It's just awful. They're just I can't I can't do it. I can't even think about it now because I used to love Diet Cherry Pepsi. I would drink a two liter a day of that shit. I, and it, and a pitcher of coffee, uh, mocha fraps, uh, a full blender of mocha frap. That would be my breakfast and lunch. And then for the rest of the day, I just drink Diet Pepsi. And no, I don't like that. So, so, Jack, yeah, so I, I could make a mean ass mocha frap, just as good, if not better, than Starbucks. And it costs like like twenty cents for a blender. I'm not even kidding. Uh, with so, what? So so. Jeff, have you um, put in the um, in those bottles of water in there into the uh, freezer and see yeah. if they stay liquid until you shake them? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, I actually I got to the point where it's annoying because I just want cold water and I grab into the fridge and I grab it and I unopen it and I, I open up the lid <laughs> and I go to drink it and nothing comes out and I look at it and it just it's freezing snow. in my hand. It's snow. Yeah, yeah, it's just freaking snow. We liked it at I first, really you it. know. When you want it, it's good. But when you just want water, it is. There's nothing more painful to just slowly watch as the water you are about to drink turns into ice. I, I I can't drink cold water. I don't like the way it goes down for the most part. Mm. Usually, the coldest I want is about fifty degrees. I usually like it around seventy, seventy-five. So that's why I just get it from the tap. I'm like, I, I like it when I like I like it when it's got like. Those razor sharp crystals of <laughs> that, that, ice in it. Best. That's the best. That, uh, Even I though I get it that when it's so when it's to the point where it freezes when you touch it, that's because the water itself is so pure that it can't freeze by itself, and it needs that aspect of the of the air or moving in order for it to start freezing because it needs mm -hmm. that. If I'm, just, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do drink water, but if I'm going to drink something that's clear. I will uh, get it uh, from uh, my R Russian uh, Russian vodka. I will pour it in uh, to a little uh, shaker, uh, throw some olive juice in it, some vermouth in it, 
do a nice little shake because James Bond is a fucking pussy, and I can explain here in a second. <laughs> You pour over, uh, make sure my cup is nice and nice, pour out the ice, put the uh, va- uh, dirty, martini, uh, dirty martini in it, and have a nice day. But, you know, if I'm going to drink something clear. Now, James Bond is a pussy, and here's why. Now, for those who drink, uh, if you uh, drink martinis, if you shake, if you, uh, shake the martini, right, you break up the ice. Therefore, you water down the vodka or gin or whatever alcohol is in it then you, you don't get this full spec. But if you use a small spoon and stir it uh, like you should, you do not you do not water down your alcohol. Therefore, James Bond is a pussy. I, I hate saying it. When I do drink, I kind of like mint juleps and stuff like that. That's fine. I, 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 well, I like I don't the, think I've ever actually had one of those. I think I had it once. I, I Like I said, it's if I have it, is I'll have one. I'll, I'll be honest. If I'm going to drink something that's sweet, and I don't like um, bitter. If I if I'm gonna drink something, I just rather have regular lemonade. I just think it tastes better than than uh, alcohol. It does. Yeah, I don't even do I don't even do lemonade or orange juice. I don't do any juice, pure water. no milk, nothing but pure water. Yeah. Um, hey, Almond, real quick. Um, mm-hmm. I've been reading uh, Pugmire, mm-hmm. and the artwork is artwork is stunning. And thanks yeah, for the, the 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 ability to get the the free uh, PDF. I, I, I'm digging. You know. I've only got like 30 or 40 pages in, but uh, yeah, I might have to buy the hardback. Well, um, here's the problem is you have to get it through drive through to because you can't find a copy anywhere. And I lucked out um, that we were talking about Indie Press Revolution. Hard copy of Pugmore? Yes, they're all sold out. So now you have I, to, well, I have to look at my local game shop because I swear I've seen a hard, at least like three or four hard copies there. Well, well if you can get it, go for it. It is hard. To find it anywhere online, everyone's out. It seems. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll start. I'll put a search on eBay, and when it comes up, it comes up, or you know, whatever. But you know, right now I got the PDF, and yeah, I, well, that's I, cool for now. I, I, you know, I want to read through the rest of the rules and stuff. But I, I was telling the little guy about it. I've got the greatest dog character name. Uh oh. Check this out. Hold on. Dirt. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, he doesn't want to see. He doesn't want us to see his reaction face. Oh, okay. check this. Check, check this name out. Yeah, check this name out. Sir Rufus Fetch. Oh. <laughs> That's so fucking dumb. You, you I love you. Know, damn. Uh, you have to come on. Hey, hey, Cottle, have you read? Have you read any of the Pugmire stuff? Uh, I read it in passing. Just okay. uh, when I was at the bookstore. Uh, I mean, I know the pretense of the story. Oh yeah. And I'd run it like the old, uh, not Ryan Reynolds, uh, Burt Reynolds, all dogs go to heaven uh, variation mm-hmm. of it. That's how I'd run it, honestly. Okay. And, well, keep going. I'll be right back. Uh, and I don't know. I just, I know. Well, I, I, made, I made friends at the, at the uh, car show today with probably a good half a dozen to a dozen different pups today. And I'm just like, and your name is, and your name is, you know, I'm um, just freaking loving it. So, I, love a good, I love dogs, don't get me wrong, you know. So this is one of those, and I like the artwork, but it's a very darker game. But that's called Historia, where you can either play, and you can still see it's in the string crap. But, yeah. you know, for the PDF. But this is, I, I bought it really for the artwork. But this is kind of 5E, um, where you can play others, but it's a darker setting. And, mm-hmm. you know, when you were talking about, hey, when you're going to run Pugmire, like, See, this is what happens when you open up your mouth and you say, hey, DM James, can you unpack? <laughs> and I was like, all right, if I'm going to have to do this, I'll have to forget a good time for everyone. Um, because I don't like doing it on a, a week a weekday because I like to get some sleep as well. Um, but, well, I, I guess Friday, but I know that you guys are all busy on that. Then I know Saturday you have your, your game. And then DM James will play on a Sunday. So like, Every other Saturday. Oh, okay. Um so there was that, but then the other one I, I but I, I, I like it better than the cats, and I like the whole idea. And it's uh, the problem that you have all too often is like, I'm going to do this because Pugmire has, when you read it, and it kind of has a dark background on it, but it's kind of meant to be because it's kind of post apocalyptic, um, but it's meant to be. Well, so is Pugmire. Hmm? Yeah. It, it's, so is Pugmire. Well, that's what I mean. I mean they Pugmire. both got. They, oh, okay. They, they both got. Yeah, well, it's got that, you know, Gamma World post-apocalyptic feel, but, you know, with 
you know, castles and stuff like that, apparently. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Did, did, did you read the uh, the appendix in? It's like, go read Thunder the Barbarian. Go read a couple Yeah, yeah that's like that's like right in the beginning, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm... I'm uh, I'm going to like try and get some of those because, you know, I used to watch Thunder as a kid. Mm-hmm. There were a couple of things I had never heard of, but I'll, I'll go through them and, you know, get some inspirational reading for that as well. Well, but, I'll tell uh, you, yeah, it's just... for, for you guys, what kind of adventure would you want? And then I have to, I'll be honest with it. It's like, you know what? I don't want it to be dark. So then I have to like avoid some of the, like you can have some of the darker undertones, but you want it to have that, that, that levity of what do I call it? Uh-huh. Well, not not quite like a like at the Hobbit level, and rather than trying to go into the, um, you know, where, I, I think I think it, 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 you know, it very much lends itself to that sort of theme, or, or maybe you know, um, I was thinking about something earlier, not Secret of Nim, or Watership Down, but you know, a, a more, a more wholesome feel to it, you know. Um, because it just seems like it's meant for that. It would be a great game. I could picture, you know, um, it being a great game for, for starting out young ones, you know, especially like 10, 12, you know, especially, you know, you could easily incorporate little girls and little boys into it, you know, without any, you know, risks of any of the, you know, issues we would have in, in you know, more grown-up games, I guess. But there's nothing wrong with it being – you know, a game for grownups. It, it's, it's just one of those things. I think that if you, if you ran one really good campaign, you, it would probably be enough to last you a lifetime. Oh yeah. You well, know? I like the fact that they kind of limited it 10th level. I like the, it, to me, this is, and I, I hate saying this, this is really what 5e should have been. And I don't mean for dogs. I mean, if you look at the rule sets, hmm. look at the spell sets and stuff. And it's kind yeah, of, like, I'll, have to, I'll have to get to that point. Because I've never read anything 5e ever, so I have no idea. As you know, you I do. talk about it, and you know, most of my my problems are with the company, not the rules. And you know, if they start talking about certain, you know, like pronouns and things like that, and X cards, and I'm like, look, we X-cards. as twelve to, as twelve to fourteen year old kids, dumb. X cards are dumb. It's all dumb. You know, we we, we made it. We made it through. You know, horrible. Horrible, you know, times. I'm not really horrible times, but you know, we made it through rough times, and we made it through bad DMs who were out to kill us. We made it through, you know, adversarial games. We made it through games where the the, the ref didn't know half the rules, and you know, if we can make it through that, why can't our you know younger generations, you know, suck it up a little? It, it, it's just a freaking what? game for Christ's sake. Well, here's what gets me about it. Even when I've played with some of the people that are woke, to be fair, I have never seen an X card used. Because generally, oh. because we describe, like, what are we willing to accept? And usually it's, we want something that's PG-13. Just just being honest about it. And as soon as we say it, like, okay, we're fine. You don't have, to, the, the fact that they have all these other things, and I understand where it came from, which was, I think, actually, Monty Cook, interestingly enough, uh, is the, the it's Twitter. If you get away from Twitter... Most of the time, we just sit down and, and everyone acts like adults and says, hey, you know, it's a little extreme. We don't try being dicks because we want the people to come back to our table. And that's what it really comes down to. Just be decent. And, and I think this whole idea of, you know, where people yelling at X cards, and I have never seen it. And I don't know if Connell it's has. It's not a fucking rule book. I mean, you guys are talking about this. Hey, uh, hey Nathan, um, the X card got brought up a couple different yeah, times. Buddy. I've been over the handbook, 5e handbook, multiple times. It never once says, these are the pronouns you're supposed to use, or these are the cards that players can use if they don't like the temperance of your game. It doesn't say any of that shit. It's, it's, it's a Monty Cook thing. And, and what's interesting is you actually read Monty Cook. He goes over the whole gambit all the way from like X-rated to G-rated and said, well, what are you familiar with and what are you going to put into your this? But I think that too much of this mother may I and you're supposed to do this at the beginning anyway you're supposed to do before you even start and most of the time I think all of us how we're used to dealing with it is like hey, it's a bit extreme you know what or you if I have a woman in my game I'll ask hey what do you find acceptable what what are off limits and that's all that we discuss we don't ever have to play any cards or anything else but that's yeah just it, it seems like like you said a lot of this you know crap seems like it's coming from 
not not only just Twitter or, or whatever, yeah. um, but from people who absolutely don't even play the game mm-hmm. or don't want people to play the game. It's like it's almost like like people have been inserted to try to sabotage it as opposed to anything else. And, and you know, it's I because I, I guarantee, you know, like with any group, you know, if you take one of these hardcore individuals who just, you know, want to crap on the game and you, you take them away from their, their herd and you bring them into a, a regular group, it, it would only take one or two games before they're like, oh, my God, this is great. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. it, I, I, well, I think this is yeah. the tempest, the teapot, the loudest voices come in, and that's where, where it's coming in. And, uh, you know, well, you say play my way or don't play it. Well, you know what? I can modify the way I play, you know, because – we all sit there and we all have expectations and there are times to be honest is yes, I'd like to play a game. What are your expectations? And we'll try working it out. This is, this is what people do just like any adult that actually goes to work. Okay. We don't have to agree on everything. Let's figure out what works. We'll say what works in, you know, as a DM, if I'm not having fun, I'm the ultimate, you know, we're done. And then if the players aren't having fun, then, you know, but I, the other part is, and I think this is good to do anyway, after every game session, I would sit and talk to my players about what they liked and what they didn't and why we would discuss it. We would discuss whatever was going on. And most of the time, I'll be honest, most players are willing to accept somewhat bad GMing. They're willing to accept imperfect rulings. They're willing to accept it because they would rather play. Oh, no. What's happening, Nathan? Glad to see you hanging out with us. Oh crap! He just oh, lost oh, yeah, midstream. He falls back. I'll I'll get him. I think you know. I, I agree with what you're saying, and I agree with you saying, Shadow. I think anybody anybody who wants to kill anything, uh, especially with social media right now, all they have to do is start fucking talking about shit they don't understand. Yeah, yeah, you're entirely right. Seems to be a lot of that, you know. You know, especially when you when you you hear things about like the average game only lasts like eight sessions. I can't even imagine that. I mean, That's dumb. I it's, mean, it's just like I, I can't. Where, where do you? I mean, the, the only thing I could see that being a case is with absolutely just god awful, horrible DMs who you know don't want like the job, so to speak. You know, if if you if you know, I I'm one of the you know few people who, you know, I played one game and the next game I was dungeon mastering. And that's the way it's been 99.9% of my gaming career. You know, if, if you're not ready, then get in somebody else's game. You know, play a bunch of games, you know, even if you have to, you know, bounce around from table to table until you, you know, you, 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 you want to DM. When you want to be the GM, the Dungeon Master, whatever you want to call it, that's when you're ready. You know, if you're not ready, like right now, James and I, we don't want to GM right now. We, we, we want to take a nice long break. You know, I, 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 I think I was first when I, you know, came across, you know, upon that idea that, you know what, it's been a long time since I got to play, you know, and after I played in Crafty's game and Bruce's game and then now the Bloodworth's game, I'm like, you know what, this is, this is kind of nice getting to be, you know, a player, especially in groups of, you know, really good GMs and players, you know, it, it, it's a nice break. <laughs> It, it's a nice break and I'm getting, you know, I, I'm actually learning things about how I would do things again, instead of not just it's my way or the highway, which, you know, it kind of should be for every GM. It's, you know, you could say it nicer than that, but you know, if you know, you can't have a game that's constantly full of people going, well, no, it should be like the, no, it, 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 maybe it should in print, but you know what? I got this idea for my, you know, end goal, end game, you know, N- not saying that it's a railroad, but I've got this idea that I'd like to see you guys get to, you know, and if you guys take the bait and you go there, cool. But, you know, if you don't want to, let's see where it goes. Um, Then, you know, I- I'm, I'm going to roll with it for a while. You know, I still plan on running a game for, for you know, table breakers when it's my turn, but I yeah, figure I'm going to be la- I'm going to be last. You know, uh, just because I want to see how you guys do things, because I've already got in my head how I want to run the game for the the five of you guys, and 
I want to, you know, before I do that, I want to see, you know, just, you know, how everybody else does certain things. No, that's fair. I mean, that, that's and, you know, I, and I'm the new guy, you know, even though I'm older than everybody there, um, I still want to, you know, see what you guys are, you know, what, what kind of expe expectations you guys have. Because you guys, have, for the most part, you've played with Jade, you've played with Baron, right? I've played with Baron, but I've never uh, been in his campaign where he is the DM. Um, okay, you I'll, played with Kai, right? No. Oh, okay. But you played with Bruce? I played with uh, Bruce's. I've never played in the game with Bruce, but I have played. I've had Bruce well, as my team on multiple different occasions. Right. Okay. And, yeah, but, that's, but I, I've never been in a game with Jade or Kai. You know, so that's and whom I forget and or Baron. Right. You know, I've watched Baron GM on, on his videos, uh, but that's not the same. No. I was so, kind of shit last night, but yeah, I get you. You know, so after I've. You know, seeing you guys, you know, play a little bit, then I can get an idea. <clears throat> Especially since I know I'm going to be running a game that um, I know some of you guys have played, but it's not like your go-to game. Maybe. What game is that? Probably Traveler. I've never played it, but I'm very much interested in it. it you know it. It's got it's got one of the most straightforward and simple and easy mechanic systems on everything and. You know, uh, it, you know the, the 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 story. You know, we've only got a four hour game to run a one shot. You know, and I'm thinking, you know, what would be the easiest to get through so that everybody gets to do stuff? And you know, you could, you know, like like Sean always says, it should be like a movie. Well, everything else seems like you know uh, Pathfinder or even D and D. The combat is going to be, you know. If there's more than one combat in a in a game like you know in a one shot, it could take up an hour of that one shot. I don't want that. Oh, yeah, I want I the combat to be quick to... and and over fast. It's not the it's not the you know the the end all be all of the the one shot. I want other things to be more important. No, I I agree. Yeah. Um very much agree. Um. I know I, I know I'm running 5e and that's fine. And I know the way I want to run it. I know the story I want to tell. I think it's gonna be fun. I think you guys are gonna get hit kick out. You too, it. Nathan. We'll see you soon, buddy. It is going to be somewhat festive for the season because I want to do mine roughly around the holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It's gonna be 5e because that's what I run. I prefer Pathfinder, but you know. No, which I'm, holiday? What? Which holiday? Uh Christmas. Okay, I, I I have you know it's just, it's going to be fun. It's unfortunately it's going to be more of a theater of the mind scenario. Yeah, I don't plan on using any any graphics or anything special at all. No, no roll twenty, none of that. I I might have some pictures, but I I, I don't even know about that yet. Um, I I want to keep it you know as as old school theater of the mind as possible, just so that you know, people can listen to it and enjoy it without needing screen, you know, as radio friendly as possible. Oh, yeah, I, I completely agree. Unfortunately, I think most of us are going to have to do that because, uh, I mean, there are BB, uh, there are TTs out there uh, that would be useful. But for our difference in technology and capability, Mainly your dad. Uh, I think uh, uh, the theater, the theater of the mind, is probably going to work uh, the best. I mean, it just makes sense if you're going to do it online. It seems like theater of the mind is the not only the best place to do online because if you're all sitting at a table, you might as well use what you have and be able to do that. But if you're online, you might as well do it that way. Well, I, mean, I you know Bruce's can't change this. Bruce's campaign is, you know, I wish I could have the same setup as Bruce and for that scenario, what, how he does it. Yeah, but, I don't know, think any of us do. Uh, I, I could probably host a game in my house, my apartment, I should say, but people are going to be sitting on, it's going to be a small crowd and, uh, you know, don't the ability of being shy is not going to be an option. 
Yeah. Well, not to mention, you know, I, I can't possibly be there. Oh, well, you and Bruce. You and Bruce are, you know, out in yeah. the west, out west. Uh, and he's gone. And oh, he's back. Back. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. If somebody had the ability to event a teleporter or uh, a portal, a, a magical portal, where I can come visit you guys, you know, spend a couple hours with you guys and, you know, walk right back through said portal and, you know, go home, I'd probably we do it. You know? do, if we were able to do games, and I assume we're going to live stream these ones that we're talking about now. In no. Person, that, oh, okay. No, they're going to be recorded and they're going to be recorded and uploaded after the fact. Yeah, after in uh, that table breakers, that night's table breakers, we're going to be talking about <coughs> what players think uh, what of the other. Uh, how are we going to do that? I, I don't know how actually to do that. You can record. Uh, see, this is going to be this is where Baron is going to come in and tell us, you know, Philistines on how to use your. Uh, uh, use YouTube correctly. Yeah, we don't know. I don't think any of us know, except for maybe. I, 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 I think I, 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 I have faith in uh, Baron. Well, it's not about a matter of faith; it's a matter of technology. I think there's a way on Streamyard that you can record without. I don't know. Well, we definitely – it's something that definitely needs to be talked about uh, behind the verbial scenes. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad that you were able to do uh, – I was hanging out with you guys. Uh, able to hang out with you guys tonight. I just didn't feel comfortable do, doing our normal Saturday uh, – I mean Saturday – our normal Sunday show without you guys. Well, I mean, oh, I expect yeah, yeah. Shadow to be there because it started as just you two – and eventually it became the three of us. Then Mark. Yeah, then Mark showed up a bunch. Um, he showed up through this. He found us through this, one of the dressing videos. And then now a bunch of people start joining every time. I am not going to lie. I got a few people on my side asking when we're going to get back to that. My response is, is once my partners in crime are, uh, you know, have the ability to. Well, once you're going to get back to what? Uh, Dresden Files. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, we, 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 have, we haven't even made it through Blade Runner. <laughs> well, Blade Runner is a little bit less of an a, a, uh, investment of time, I should say, than reading a novel. That is tr entirely true, yes. Well, uh, yeah, but even, even some of us couldn't make it through the Conan books to be ready for uh, the Conan movie. You well, know, like you, like the YouTube, like YouTube. You I know, Mark and I was the only one. What? I couldn't find a physical copy of it, and a few uh, links I got fucking sucked. <clears throat> but I, that's I do plan on. I uh, uh, it's a recopy, but I have a I have a friend who's going to let me borrow his copy, and I am planning on reading it. Yeah, you'll you'll enjoy the hell out of it. It's. It's so much different than, than, you know, what, you know, not just you maybe, but most people have no idea how much better the Robert E. Howard books are than anything else that's ever been, you know, imagined or thought of when it comes to Conan. Everybody I've ever met, for the most part, few exceptions, have always, you know, had this weird sort of juvenile sort of opinion of what Conan really was. It was so much more intellectually, you know, solid and interesting than than anything I, I I've seen to date, other than the uh, Savage Sword of Conan magazine. And uh, mind you, those were yeah. written, those were put out forty years ago, and, and you know they only had the books, the novels that you were trying to get. As, a, as as to to go on, they didn't have any movies or cartoons or TV shows or anything to go on. All they had was those books. No, that's fair. I mean, that's incredibly fair. Um, I got I finished reading the Island of Doctor Moreau, and holy fuck! Yeah, I, I, I 
I, I, I couldn't uh, find the time to get through that again. It was like a, a just a really busy month at that exact oh, no, moment. I completely get it. I, I, you know, I completely get it, and I appreciate Mark for uh, suggesting it. It was. A, it was good. It's an interesting choice. I got to say that you know, I would have never picked that in you know a million years. And you know, even though we only watched the the old the old movie, I. I enjoyed it. You know, maybe it was vastly different. Maybe that's why. But I'm glad I watched the movie. Um, it was certainly good. Yeah, I have no complaints on the book. I have, well, I have some complaints on the book, to be honest. But it was just it, the fact that it was dry as hell. Um, I thought the characters, as I said before, were kind of flops. Uh the main character was definitely a flop, uh, and all the other characters were interesting. But I don't know. It's I'm glad I read it again because I haven't read it since high school. Do I, I look forward to reading it again in anywhere in the near future? No. No, I'm done. I, I don't think I'll ever revisit that in you know my lifetime. But you know, we we had fun. We shared it, and time to move on to something else. A little more. Uh, a little more relevant to gaming although that would make for a classic you know module I, i'm surprised someone didn't literally try to do that if not you know if you think about like a lot of the classic novels oh, if yeah. someone made a a series of modules based on the classic novels they'd make bank well Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, for really any system out there, I mean, I, I yeah, really for any system that would work. Uh, I mean, of course, you would have to tweak it. But it, yeah, it well, if, you, if, you, if you wrote them system agnostic, like they used yeah. to do in the old days, that would be even better. Yeah. Uh, there's aspects of it I don't think you could. I think you'd have to make take one novel and sit down with each system and do a variation of it to make it work. Uh, no, I think all you'd have to do is say fantasy or science fiction, and and leave out, you know, certain things, and and, and maybe use a generic, you know, like level and hit point. Uh, because yeah. Judges, Guild, Judges Guild used to do that back in the day. Even though there were fewer games out there, they would make modules that had very little um, specifics. Yeah, for, no, I for, you, know, for, you know, they. Uh, I think maybe they might have had hit points, but you could easily go, "What? This thing's only got thirty-seven hit points." You know, my lowest level character in the party's got that, so I'll double it or triple it. You're good to go. Oh yeah, no, not, yeah, I completely agree. The AC. Oh, I need to. I need to tweak up the AC. I need to tweak up the uh, HP. If it is for a D20 system, it should have you know normal D20 system stats. Uh, when you get to other systems out there, let's say Traveler, then it's a whole. Even then, you could just ignore them and say this, this, and that. I mean, but yeah, I see where you're going. Hell, even if you were if you were really smart, you would leave blank lines for things like hit points and level. You just, you know, that way you could even, you know, gear it toward any level and any any game. To yeah. show, you know, this, is, you know, he's a fighter or whatever. And if you don't know what a fighter means, because your game system. You, you you know you're I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. Of equivalent. The Thank you're you. a melee the your the enemy is a melee creature or a uh, or a spellcaster or a divine. Yeah, I mean there's there's simple words that you could use that basically fit for yeah, I see where you're going with that though. I mean, you could recommend what CR it should be, or I don't know. It'd be different. The, uh, the literally, you could leave all that crap blank. You know, that way, you know, you could throw it at a twentieth level party 
or a, you know, first level party. That way, it would leave it more up to you, and it would literally leave less to be written in the module, like in the old days, where they would leave so much open. You know, one of the very first modules ever made for Dungeons and Dragons, all the rooms were basically empty, and at the back of the book there was a list of encounters. And you just picked the encounter and put it in there. It was also empty of treasure. It had a list of treasure. You picked the treasure, put it in there. It was a first level module. And it was, the rooms were all, you know, described and had tricks and traps and all that cool shit. But the monsters, entirely up to you by using the list. And I think it was like 20 or 50 or 100 monster encounters and the same amount of treasure. And everything, you know, is first level, so it was little bits here, little bits there. And if you cleared that two-level dungeon, you walked, you could walk out with, you know, a decent amount of treasure, a decent amount of experience points, probably looking at second or third level if you walked in there with zero. And and it was a it was a good time for everybody. I, yeah, I can get behind that. And, 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 and I love that. And I wish more people besides Arduin did that, because that way when your friends go out and buy the module, they have no clue what they're going up against. Oh, even if you buy the module that I'm running, doesn't mean I'm going to be buying a uh, running it. Uh, uh, rules as written. I've, I've seen fucking right. people do that shit, and it pisses me off. Where I have the module. I know exactly where everything is. Are you sure? Yeah, well, even, even yeah. that, there's still... There's, even if they get only one thing out of it, that can make all the difference. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's I mean, true. literally, you know, especially when you start getting toward, you know, the important stuff, the secret doors, the hidden layers, you know, the end goals and the end battle. You know, how much work as a DM do you want to have to do to make sure your players aren't doing that? You know, all it takes is one guy and nobody else knows not even the other players, and he's got the module at home. He studied up, and he says, you guys, I got a plan. And then from yeah. there, it just falls, you know, apart as, as the, compared to what it was meant to be played. Well, that's where you just have to have tr – I mean, I hate to say it, but your, your players need to have trust in you that you are going to run a solid game, and you need to have trust in your players – they're not going to do shit that's going to wreck your game. And, yeah, there is no game without the DM. But at the same time, there is no, ga there is no game without the players. Mm, except that there are. There are tons of more and more solo games being put out every day. I, yeah. There's a solo guy to be there. Well, yeah. No, I mean, you could literally buy a game like, like Shadows of Brimstone. I played, my son watched me. I used to play that all the time by myself um, because it was made to beat them. The rules were there. You could still so, cheat. Yeah, but then, I mean, then you have to look at yourself in the mirror and go, I'm a big, dirty cheater. You know, and, and you realize you know, in society, a generation, where people do that all the time, and they don't care. That or they yeah. hate them. That also annoys the ever living how me. Oh, I'm playing a video game. What level are you on? I'm level thirty. How did you get that far so high? I paid. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh like Jesus. Where's the? Where's now? Nah, that's not even fair play at that point. It's like, why do you even bother? I don't get it. Yeah, I've. Yeah, I can't see that either. Oh. Yeah, echo. Echo, echo, echo. You walk down the stairs, and I'm in the room where the stairs are. Uh, yeah, that's why. <clears throat> Had to mute. That's usually why I don't go here, but right now I am, so. Hmm. I get it. Like I said, I do appreciate you and your dad showing up. I just, I mean, I was kind of open outreach. I was like, when are we going to be talking about the movie? I'm like, uh, next week. 
He's like, oh, okay. I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about doing a stream just to do a stream. Yeah, because you didn't do any last week? Yeah, well, yeah, that, and because of my schedule for work, I got like another half an hour, an hour before I want to go to bed because I got to be up so freaking early. Is that a thing that's going to keep going consistently from now on or just? Uh, it looks that way. So I just need to reschedule my Tuesdays. I mean, you guys are two hours below, uh, uh, behind me. I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that going to mess with Sundays? Sundays will be fine. Sundays will be fine. It's just my normal Tuesday uh, ones where I do late night. It really is going to be, uh, I'm an old man. I got to go to bed early. I got to be responsible. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be starting my own show re- soon. I don't know. I want to have it scheduled at a specific time, like Sunday shows. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you do a show and I'm available and if you have me, I'll jump on and, you know, be part of the peanut gallery anytime you want, man. I mean, I want it to be very, I guess, scheduled where I have specific people on at specific times. Oh, that's fair. Specific topics. I see how it is. <laughs> It's not entirely what I meant, but yes. <laughs> That's exactly but, yeah, mostly a rule to prevent my dad from jumping in every single time because we're, if he does, it's we're just going to keep arguing over and over again. That's uh, part of your guys' charm. Is the exact same argument over and over again, and I don't really want that. I, and I get that. Trust me, I do understand that. But very, part of your guys' charm is you guys kind of bickering back at each other and it not going bad yeah um, I mean, uh, we can't. we're in the same house well oh it, it can go bad trust me it can go bad yeah, but uh and i'm glad that it doesn't because you guys are fun to hang out with and yeah and another <laughs> thing is that though it's gonna i'm gonna have the same people on multiple times yeah I'm probably gonna I don't want to associate. I'm not gonna say I don't want it associated with Shadow and Sun, but what it really is is I don't really want it associated with me as much. If that makes sense. Um, everything you do on YouTube is unfortunately going to latch back to you. Like Shadow, if he decides to do a show all by himself, it's still going to be you know, hey, where's Jack? Yeah. Or when you do a show, for the most part, some people might be like, okay, where's, um, uh, where is your dad, you know, and so forth and so on. It's just kind of the nature of the creature, because there's been a few times I've decided to just come on by myself, and I get uh, messages like, hey, we're Shadow and Jack. I'm like, I have no idea. So, yeah, I don't know what we were doing. You know, that's part of the reason why I decided not to do my normal Sunday show today because, you know, it's it's our show. I mean, it's really our show over every uh, C A S T R O S O D M. Somebody's yelling at me in Spanish. Wait, what? Uh, somebody was cussing me out in Spanish. Wait, where? When? On uh, in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> oh. Castro Esso. C A S T R O S O. Wait, C S? C A S. Cass. Cass? Uh, then it's R O S O. And then D E. M R D A. All one word? Uh, no, separated. Uh, uh, the the C one's one word, then it's D D E, then uh, then that's one word, then M R D A is another one. I think that's Puerto Rican. Well, yeah. you know, for a green. I, I have this thing where I I don't accept Portuguese as its own language separate from Spanish, but if you do acknowledge Portuguese as its own language, then you have to acknowledge Puerto Rican because Puerto Ricans just 
they decided we're going to speak Spanish because we're a Spanish colony, but then we're just going to butcher the language and turn it into its own thing. But then we're going to convince the world that we're still speaking Spanish because nobody who doesn't speak Spanish can tell the difference. When you hear uh, somebody speaking, that you hear is somebody very speaking much the case because I couldn't tell the difference. You hear somebody speaking Spanish and you hear someone speaking Portuguese, it's the same language, just the Portuguese decided to put M behind all of their words. It's like when somebody speaking English wants to make it sound like they're speaking Spanish, so they just put O behind all of their words, or A occasionally. It's just that, but speak Spanish and then add M as the last letter, and that's Portuguese. Eh, good to know. Yeah, I, I speak drunkenese. Uh, also, there. instead of and being E, Y, it's E. e. Ah. Yeah, I'm, as I'm talking to you guys, I'm being a horrible person and getting in my points on Grand Theft Auto. So I'm shooting people. <laughs> and I'm only shooting people that have bon uh, bounties on them. I mean, I'm not just going after anybody, but if they have a bounty over like eh, 5,000, I normally go and I, 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 I kill them. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 so Connell has become the bounty hunter. Uh, it, it's just <laughs> greed is good. No, um, <laughs> you know, I just realized that there's a stereotype in media where bounty hunters are like these evil criminal guys, which I mean, a lot of the times they were. I mean, you can't get a saint to catch a sinner all the time, but it's a weird thing where most of the time, not only are bounty hunters portrayed as criminals, but they're also portrayed as like working for the bad guys, even though typically they were just. Probably was just in it for a fucking paycheck. Yeah, they were just random <laughs> who already were they were criminals, but they decided to walk into the police station and not get shot on sight because this is like western eighteen right. late eighteen hundreds Texas and New Mexico. There's there's some good stories. Now I to be fair, I've i I've known a couple of bond bail bondsmen and you have to understand what, what how that works. But yeah, it's um it's Not even most bounty uh, archetypes are based off of Western stories. Sure. Well, a lot of things are, and you're like, okay, well, what are they? And the, the you know, a lot of it is used to drum up fear too. Uh, and yeah. what forget is, you go to a bondsman, you get it. He he puts up ninety percent. You know, he he you you pay a bond, you pay ten percent to him of your of your bail, and he covers it. But with the understanding, he's going to hunt you down if you if you run. And people forget about that. And I, I've i heard a few things like, oh, my God. I went, well, you know, I, I don't understand what goes on with all of these. And... <laughs> well, if you do something dumb enough where you have to go to court, that's your fault. If you pay one of these companies to help bail you out and you don't, you know, do what you're told, once again, that's your damn fault. It's I on you. I used to believe a lot more about that, about if you get caught by the police, but now I'm kind of going, you know, especially after seeing some of the stuff that went on in Chicago and, and other stuff. I, I, I'm not I, saying there's not crooked cops. Yeah. I'm just... I was thinking crooked prosecutors is what I was uh, Yeah, well, you know, a prosecutor can prosecute a ham sandwich if given the right cause. Uh, uh, but, yeah. So, so I mean, I, I've, I've changed my views on some things. I still think that that all too often, especially the media wants to bypass due process. Yeah. That's a, that's in, in, that to me, that's very important for all of that. But yeah. again, I don't want to get yeah. too political on stuff, but like, well, I mean, I, of I, course I they do. Them. They want to institute. You know, and, of yeah, course. They, 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 they prefer to, you know, try you in the, the court of public opinion and that's just not they kosher. Want to institute absolute democracy in every aspect of life. Well, if you want to break crimes, come to Illinois because after June and January 1st, <laughs> the things that you used to go to jail for, not going to jail for anymore. I, I, You know what, though? is You were talking about that, that guy at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. And the Chick-fil-A guy. What Chick-fil-A guy? The, the, Chick the, 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 right. That's Fort Walton Beach. And what a lot of people don't realize is those towns are generally supported either by, by tourism and military. There are two major military bases there. One of the largest in the United States, actually. And I went, it, you aren't going to get a fair trial. I, I don't want to see you aren't going to get a fair trial. What I mean is, you're not going to get any, you're not going to get a sympathetic jury for trying to um, pull that crap. They're like, oh, he's bad. No, no, people don't put up with that crap. I remember being at Fort Rucker. No, it was uh, Fort Knox. And a guy held up um, a soldier's wife. The soldier chased him. 
the, the, the robber threw away his gun. The soldier got the gun and shot the guy. Never went to court because they can't find someone. <laughs> I mean, there, there's no sympathy when you start doing stuff like that. You start attacking innocent people, and they are merciless. You know? Oh, yeah, and, and rightfully so. I mean, the, all right. The guy, uh, the guy that I'm talking about, I kind of had that coming. Uh, the guy that I'm talking about, it was a Chick-fil-A guy, and he sees this woman carjacked so, and who has children. So he runs out there and tackles the son of a bitch. And like and holds him until the cop shows up. I'm like, I don't have a problem with this at all. I'm like right on. And I'm not like the biggest um Chick fil A supporter at all. I, I <laughs> I'm not the biggest Chick fil A supporter. Well, I have to laugh because sometimes you go through and like their political decisions and all I look at is just be a damn restaurant. And I yeah. mean, I, I mean Here's the thing. If you really look at it, and I have to give credit somewhat to Chick-fil-A, they're not open on Sundays because of, uh, you know, religious, same thing with Hobby Lobby. I'm okay with that if you're going to stick by those those things. Don't yeah. play these games. But the other point is I don't see a lot of Chick-fil-A trying to buy ads and everything else on this. No. It's usually the media that brings it up that they get mad at. And I went, stop it. They got mad because they were giving money to the Salvation Army. I give money to the Salvation Army because I believe that homeless – Especially homeless men get a real. Yeah, story. Um, if you if you ever look into how much <clears throat> they actually donate compared to how much they keep, you'd never do it again. Well, actually, that's true of most of them. I found that they had a higher rate than a lot of the other charities. Um, I yeah, but, but when it's in single digit percentages, they can go pound sand. Oh, I thought it was. Well, I looked at one time; they were in like the eighty percent at one point. I don't know if it's changed. I know that Goodwill. Mm -hmm. Goodwill was the one that had a real problem with it. Uh, Salvation <laughs> Army was bad about it, too. Okay. And it may just depend on where you are. I was homeless there for a little bit, and I reached out to, you know, I had a few people tell me, you need to re uh, reach out to uh, Salvation Army, you know, the, you know, three hots and a cot. Yeah. Well, they won't even let you in. And this is, I don't know if it's a national situation or if it's ran by each one's different than the next. But I had to bring in like uh, like twenty thousand dollars a month before they would even consider to let me just crash there. What? I mean, if what? I was bringing in money, why would I need to be here? And it was just it was it just doesn't make sense. It, <sighs> yeah, I used to I used to work for Goodwill a long time ago, and even back then in the eighties, it was insane how much money they made. Compared to what they donated. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can look this stuff up for a lot of them, and that's what I tried doing. And and again, I don't know what it goes through. Right here, it says eighty-two percent goes to aid. I'm like, okay, usually anything over fifty, I'm willing to accept. But that was from 2013, or so I don't, or I don't know what it is now. Um, and that's I, the problem I have with a lot of stuff. But like you said, with the with the salvation, I'm like, what? Um, yeah, it was like you well, know what they if you just look from what they're going to tell you, that's that's not gonna be accurate. They're well, gonna pad it, those numbers. Well you're supposed to buy the IRS stuff, that's what I'm referring to. Because you're supposed to look right. at you're supposed to well and my friend, she um uh, that Romanian lady, she used to deal with with uh, psychotics in Chicago and she had a few of them die on everybody who still lives in Chicago. Well, no, no, no. I mean, they, no, I mean, it's nice to make fun, but I really do feel sorry for people who have two psychotic breaks. And she said, it's amazing on some of the drugs you give them. Um, you know, I'm like, look, I can try fixing certain things, but there's a certain point. I just don't have the patience for it. I like to help people who can help themselves. But when you're psychotic, I'm like, look, I can't help you. That's not my field. I, I don't have the emotional investment to do that crap. And uh, oh yeah, I mean, Ah, uh, I have uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, and a crippling depression that beats my ass most days. But I'm also on medicine. I do what I need to do to keep a healthy mind. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't always work, and, you know, bad days are bad days. But we all have them. Yeah. Well, and I don't like the, the you know, I want people to get help. I mean, that's part right. of it. Right. And, and – I, I really do believe, and but you're right. Um, 
you know, and the problem is a lot of times, as I said, I always look at the percentages, like how much goes to this versus that. Um, so that's, that's what I have to look at. But, but they're supposed to do the IRS stuff, and that's what you're supposed to look at. But I said, well, how many are actually going to this? And I said, this is one of the reasons I would rather give food or something to a homeless shelter, because I know that you can't really miss food as much as you could dollars. When I was living in Nashville, God, I love Nashville. I'd move back there in a heartbeat if, if given an opportunity. Once my daughter is like older, uh, <laughs> I'm keeping my damn promise. Damn it! Uh, but I love I love Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee is just a really cool place for me. Anyways, I was working for a um, a food uh, pantry where we go to what was it Whole Foods mm-hmm. and I'd go pick up food that was set aside for them and. It was normally like a trunk, I mean, a, ba- a bed, a, you know, bed full of stuff. And just doing that and helping people made me, you know, it wasn't like, it made me feel good. I mean, it, yeah. getting up freaking 7 o'clock in the damn morning every Saturday really annoyed the other living <laughs> hell out of me. <laughs> but the juice was worth the squeeze. And... um and that was cool. And it was the little pantry that could or some variation like that. The um, And just she couldn't keep it together financially, charity. You think a, a business like that, not business, but a operation like that would have grants. And from the because all she's she's not getting paid to do it. Everything was donation. Food was donation. And she had to get uh, 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 asked for people's money. Uh, not the homeless people who go around to businesses asking if they want to donate money. So she had a place that she could do this at. And just a bunch of people are like, no, no, we, you know, no, no, for whatever reason. And she couldn't keep her doors open. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't goodwill. It wasn't uh, all these multi billion, no, I want to say billion, multi million dollar companies or how much money they have. It they was are a- multi billionaire companies. Okay. It was just a woman trying to do the right thing. And and see, those I like a lot. And and that but it, you know, it takes a lot yeah. out of it. Is it, like I said, it's and I'll be honest about it, is social workers do not get paid for all the hassle they have to deal with. I mean, you know, my friend, she's talked about getting attacked one time and it wasn't even by the uh by the homeless man. She was trying to park her, her via or the vehicle over to help. And the guy just run, ran up and started punching her in the face. And she said the homeless actually, because she worked with them, came to her aid. <laughs> Why? You know, it just, it was, it was the kind of thing, I think she scratched it hard. Or maybe they didn't. Anyway, the guy blamed her for it. Ran up and started punching her. Like, Why are you attacking a woman, number one? For that and that's why you go for insurance here let me go get the insurance but yeah I have a- it's oh my god you scratched my paint uh you have insurance yeah i mean fucking people i dumb I, I, dumb brains I, well it, it's well those are just things that get it into and everyone has their moment if someone hugs a horn at me and it's not and i'm doing the right thing like following the law i remember doing that one time and i had this big long i forgot what it was um I had this big long black duster, and people don't freak, people don't realize how big you are. But they're like, but I was going through residential. And there's a stop sign like every street, so I'd stop at every stop sign. Then when the guy was getting pissed off because he just wanted to run all the stop signs, I'm like, well, first off, you can move over to the street next to us where there aren't where there's stop lights. Well, he didn't want to have to deal with that, but and there weren't nearly as many stop lights. Said, but it's a residential street where I lived, where you know there are a lot of kids. I. You, you have the horn. I stepped out. Man, he was terrified. He like, hey! <laughs> I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm following the law. I'm, I'm, you know, but that's the one thing that set me off. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I, I'm a better person than I was when I was younger. I mean, I have to be now that I have my own kids. Uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> if I got angry, people got hurt, and that's just not a life I want to live anymore. And um, I was in high school, and this kid named Sam was in the wheelchair, and he was an asshole. He was. He was just an asshole. And he was a prick to everybody, but me and him got along fine. Mm-hmm. And he said something to one of the uh, more popular kids there, um, and it's something he should never have said, honestly. You know, thinking about it years later, he should never have gone up there. And the guy dumped, out, dumped him out of his chair. 
And I'm like, that pissed me off. That got me going. That that really got me going. And um, I said, put him back in his chair. You're going to have problems. And he didn't believe me. And we had we had we had a conversation. <laughs> we had a fist to cuff conversation. We had a conversation with fists. <laughs> right. Conversation. I kind of broke his arm before his football season started, where he wasn't able to play at all. And yeah, I was not very popular afterwards. <laughs> That's a bit of a given. Well, he's, I mean, it was kind of funny in the sense that, you know, if you ever hunt or anything, there's a certain noise a rabbit will make when it's about ready to die. He kind of made the same noise. And I mean, yeah, I, I'm an asshole for doing it, but he was an asshole for, for dumping uh, Sam out of seat and Sam should have fucking kept his mouth shut. Uh, <laughs> I don't think, but, with the information given, I don't know what was said. I don't know who any of these people are. But with the, with the information given, I don't think there's a single person in this story that did a single thing properly. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I have this, like, caveman morality aspect, or at least uh, used to. And I'm like, there's just things you don't do. And this was something you just don't do. And I eventually slightly kind of got over it. Uh, if it's like at the bar, if I'm at a bar, and this is back in co- college, it got me in trouble. This guy slaps his girlfriend, and I was raised, you don't hit women. Yeah. And yeah. I go over there, have a conversation with him, and I, you know, he gets mouthy, and we were having a conversation. She turns around and fucking hits me. And I'm like, mm, I see the air of my way here. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, uh, if you're going to run your mouth, you better be ready to back it up. I don't care what yeah. your position is. Well, both my parents were in wheelchairs, and my old man used to say shit that, trust me, would light me up. And, uh, you know, those, those kind of people sometimes get uh, spoiled thinking that they're immune to consequences. Um. Right. Oh, I Sam. Uh, Sam. I don't know the full story, but Sam was in a horrible car accident with his parents that left him paralyzed from waist down, and he just never forgave anybody for it. Um. He actually yeah. ended up committing suicide years later because uh, oh. he just couldn't deal with it, and um. I'm not, you know, excusing his behavior. He could have kept, he should have kept his mouth fucking shut. But you don't do, I, and see, and this is where I'm bad. You just don't do shit like that. Well, well, to be fair, Connell, he did give the other guy an option, put him back in his wheelchair. I mean, if that had happened, you'd be like, you know, would that, would you, have, because even myself, I'm like, yeah, that's excessive. You're like, all right, you know what? I was being a dick. Here, I'll put you back up. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, even if you run your mouth at a certain point, you're like, that's excessive for, you know, it needs to be par, um, par for what you did. But yeah. Right. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I just, I, he, I didn't like the guy beforehand, so I'm, I'm sure that didn't fucking help. Clearly. Uh, well, yeah, there's, a, I know for a, I mean, obviously not me now, but a year ago, there's certainly some people that I would, Certainly think about doing the same too. <laughs> but Violence again, is that's never the point. answer, says the most violent person you'll ever meet. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll justify it to myself by saying that that same person. Um, did I, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to agree on two things. One, I don't think you're the most violent person here. Two, I think violence solves everything. It has historically, it will continue to do so historically. Even voting. Is a form of violence. I, I, you know what I, my, my view on not for voting, at least my view on, on it is violence in many cases um, complicates a lot of things. Is and, and it does solve a lot within reason. Violence is but, something that it, it's an option, and every option has its benefits, and it, every option has its downsides. 
It does. Well, and you have to be careful on, you know, the, the questions and how far do you want to escalate it? That's that's what it really certainly I, I uh, learned early in life that I'm not right. Uh, when I say <laughs> I'm not right is I can damn near justify anything. Well, most people can't. Here's the difference. Yeah, You're almost can. 40 years old and you said, you know what, it wasn't right for me to do that. So obviously... You've had yeah. introspection and retrospect on that. Right. And medicine, you know, therapy and medicine, dot, dot, dot. Uh, but <laughs> I started giving myself rules at like age 10, you know, and I just start, I'm like, if I want to survive this role after having a conversation with my grandpa, because my grandpa was the same way, you know, man should have rules. Yeah. And I live by a certain uh, number of rules that I follow and it keeps my ass out of trouble. Because if it didn't, if I didn't do this, I don't think I would be here talking to you guys. Well, just like I, you know, I, I hear a lot of people fight and argue and you say, you know, there are times to fight and there are times that I found that if I can diffuse things, people will, will listen. Like, you know, I, I remember, oh my God, you know, I was in Iraq and we would control on who did what. I don't mean this in a bad way, but we controlled the money. Anyway, um, and with, with the effect, Sorry. But, 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 yeah, we were, but we were trying to be nice. And the thing is, is that um, is that my my coworker got real pissy because he didn't get the job, and so they, he would just fight with the other guy in that position. I, in the meantime, would we would go out. I would catch him away from the group and everything else, and said, "Hey, man." could you do this? Because it makes our life hard if you don't do it. And we can get through a little bit faster with the Iraqis. And he's like, okay, sure. I'll do that. And the way that you can talk to people when you're not trying to necessarily, because that, that's the problem too often people get into a fight and they lock in and they become completely intransient. And I'm like, no, you know, I, I would rather, I'll, if I'll, I'll be nice. As long as we, you know, I care about the end result. The end result is let's get this going through, especially Let's do anything that doesn't create more work for myself. God, I don't know what people are doing. So it's like, stop it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I understand that. No. I, I just, I don't know. Violence. I don't know if I was living in Ireland during the era I was or just being an angry teenager. Uh, violence was my love language. <laughs> uh, that must have been interesting with your girlfriend slapping you around. Uh, <laughs> I was single back then because most girls at that point knew just as like, no, <laughs> just no. <laughs> um, my daughter's namesake uh, died uh, when I was in, in Ireland when I was 14. And that really just kind of stunned me for having any kind of cutesy romantic relationship for, for several years. I mean, there was women out there I did things with. But it was nothing, you know, the high school love bullshit that, you know, all high schoolers should go through just wasn't really an option for me. Yeah. So uh, that and I did, had a rule number uh, five at the time. Don't date girls you go to high school with because if it goes bad, you're stuck with them for X amount of years. You know what? That applies to work, too. Oh, no, it, it evolved it from it went from school to it, it skipped college. Though. It, it really did. It, it, it skipped college. <laughs> but I, I, I just, to work. It wasn't so bad for high school, but God, if you went into the... Oh, for work, it was one of these things that... Because I kept work separate from my personal life, and this one lady decided that she wanted to date me, and I was like, no, we aren't going to work out. No, we aren't gonna. And finally, I was just like, fine. I'm lazy. I mean, I'll, you know, I mean that sounds horrible. But boy, she would get mad. We'd have like a fight that that morning or something. It was work night shift, and then come back to work, and I would treat her like I would everybody else. And I said, "Well, it's not fair not to do that." But boy, that would confuse the hell out of her. Like, no, I can leave. I can keep my personal life separate from my business life, and and that's something she was threw her for a loop. Um, yeah, I just I, I uh, dating girls in hmm. your own high school. Uh, you know, it could be awesome. It could be a positive experience. Yeah, but I mean, like... It could be a shit show. <laughs> yeah, it seems kind of hard these days for it to be anything other than that, though. I mean, the well, maybe, show? you know... No, no, I mean, like like for, for my son here, you know, 
um, the likelihood he's going to meet anybody in the next four years that he wants to go out with other than at high school just seems like, you know, uh, an I mean, what's, what's the next closest town? Dozens of miles. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Also, there's a, this, even in this area, as much as I like to go on about how this is a conservative pocket, not so much with the youth. Well, that's true <laughs> of a lot of places. That's, I mean, that's just that's just a hit. That's just historic uh, historic truth. Young people yeah. are young people for a reason. Because they're dumb. Well, well, well. well you, you don't get any smarter until you start making mistakes. Now, ideally, if you're really yeah. smart, you learn from other people's mistakes rather than your own. But yeah, but, you know that's that. Ideally, <laughs> ideally, and, yes. And, and to be fair, it sounds like your father has done plenty of his own mistakes. He's passing that wisdom on to you, so you don't, you know, do the same. <laughs> well, yeah, there, are, there. Are, are Thanks there for the benefit of the doubt, doubt, there, Omen. <laughs> well, I, I mean. Well, I mean, yeah, you have a really good relationship with your correct. son. I mean, we can't argue with that. You have a really good relationship with your son. You don't hide. Well, we've we've been lucky, you know. Um, yeah. I, I've been home for him, you know, since since he was like two, and yeah. you know, I, I've really seen what happens elsewhere, right and you know, you know, I, I'm old fashioned. Boys need their dads, and they need their moms, <laughs> but a little more so with the dads. <laughs> And girls need their moms and their dads, but a little more so with their moms. It's just, you know, it's just a function of, you know, being male or female. You got to have a role model and, you know, yeah. for good and bad, you know, he's going to learn a lot of stuff about me that he doesn't want to do. Just like I learned, I you know, from you my own man. Certain I shit. About you that I don't want to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know. I left you wide open for that. Um, <laughs> there was a whole bunch of crap my own man did that I, I never did. You know, I, I remember... The you know the speaking of dating the first time I brought home a girl um, that wasn't you know the exact same complexion as myself mind oh, you this sure. was he was like you know Sieg Heil the whole bit you know and I'm like oh really really <laughs> guess who's never gonna date another white girl you know um, <laughs> and and uh, uh, I kid you not. Um, they, he, he got to really like her, you know, the, the, the first girl I'm talking about, um, you know, because she was, you know, nice, you know, I mean, he, 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 you know, when you, you know, meet people, especially people that are disabled in wheelchairs, you already have these preconceived notions on both sides. And, you know, he had his, she didn't come in with any, she's like, you know, I want to hang out with your son. So I'm going to talk to your family. And he's just like, wow, really? You know, this this high girl really wants to talk to me. Okay, hey son, you know she's pretty smoking hot. You might want to hang on to her. I'm like, <laughs> well, I, I told this uh, story <laughs> over at James, uh, over at DM James. Um, I was Peoria has a couple has a couple uh, pool hall, and I'm no slash when it comes to shooting pools. You know, not great at it, but I can definitely hold my own with you know other. Um, other bad players. Uh, that's not fair. Anyways, and um, I'm playing pool, and I'm like 17 years old, just kind of doing my own thing. And this girl comes up and starts talking to me, and I start talking back. Ah, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't, I don't see the damage. I mean, she's smart. She knows how to speak. You know, she, she's properly dot dot dot. In this area, it's you know. But it's rare. No, that's horrible, too. I shouldn't say stuff like that. No, no, and, no, no, no. No, it's honest. To be fair, whether people like it or not, is um, it's hard to find a good person, man or woman. Yeah, yeah, she could hold a conversation. And she's like, you know, I'm like, hey, can I take you out to movies, dinner? You know, because that's, you know, I, well, my grandpa taught me. When you meet somebody, you take them out for dinner. You buy them dinner or coffee. And oh my god, we'll get back to the whole coffee comment here in a second. Anyways, oh no, this and one. coffee doesn't always mean coffee, but we'll get back to that here in a second. <laughs> and uh, no, no, it doesn't. I found that one out. Um, anyways, and she's like, "Well, you have to come over and meet my parents." I'm like, oh, "Not a big deal. I, I, I get this." Um, oh, she no, seems I like a very that. respectful. That's, that's, actually, that's, story. that's kind of what I'm. I, I'm wanting to dip my feet back into the dating world. I'm thinking I'm. Just, 
over not over Maggie, but I know that you know I got to move on scenario. Mm-hmm. And I go over to her house, and her dad meets me at the front door. You know, wearing a business uh, business suit, tie, really respectful, kind of leave it to Beaver feel in the very beginning. I meet the uh, the wife, the mom before, and. Um, and she seems really cool, really down to earth. Then she's like, well, come to the dining room and we'll have dinner. On the other, and the father sits at the head of the table. Her brother sit on both sides. I sit next to the girl. The mom sits at the other end. Proper table sitting. You're from Germany. Mm, no, no, that's oh, not. no, that's not true. She should have sat across from you. Yeah, well, I didn't argue that. <laughs> Sorry. Her hands, her hands were mainly to herself. Trust me. Uh, and no, if, if, if it was my house, she'd be sitting across the table. Gotcha. Anyways, behind her dad, there was a particularly red flag. The yeah. Kidney, during the 1930s, 20s. Oh, you mean red, white, and black? White, uh, red and black has a little weird symbol on it. Oh, the Indian flag. Yeah, the Indian flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have a picture a, of it in purple from um, Taipei. Go ahead. <laughs> and, and he does a prayer. Thank you. You know, the dinner prayer. Then he does another prayer. Blessing. Uh, may God give blessings to Hitler. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I ate dinner. I said, thank you for, I was being very respectful and everything. And I'm, you know, I get out of there as soon as I could. I, I can add dinner with them. I played a board game or two with them. I was, I wanted to get out. I wanted to get out as fast as I could, but I have to be respectful. I mean, there's a way you act at somebody's house. Even if you don't like the person, there's a level of liqueur, uh, not, uh, um, what you're liqueur. supposed to act. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she calls me the next day. I'm like, I, I don't think this is going to work out. Sorry. No, not into white supremacists. No, I mean, I thought it was weird. Because, you know, I'll be honest, it's like, until, I guess, last few years or so it died out I, but i remember in the 1980s and i swear this in dallas they had a march by these guys and they were jewish neo-nazis like um what 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 <laughs> when you say neo-nazis neo-nazis yeah, yeah. well hey guys you guys you guys forget george soros has been doing his shit for a long time that does not surprise me one bit no 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 this was this was I, it was like i think someone missed the message because i've been to dachau is Dachau? Yeah, I've been to Dachau, and I've been to, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, because my father would take me to some of these places so we could see it. I'm quite familiar with what went on, and who would go there, and I'm like, you understand I have a big mouth. I know I would end up in one of these places. And so, <laughs> so whenever I start hearing people talk about, oh, it only affects this one group. No, it affected lots of people, dissidents. Uh, my grandparents' people, you know, my yeah. grandma's people. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I've been to some of those places, too. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a, the, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, one oh of the God. only white girls I ever did date, actually two of them were uh, Jewish, so that went I, over pretty well. Only one actually, well. they were technically white. I, I well, you know the, the I guess oh no, the, track record. no, she was she was as ginger as they come and somehow Jewish. So so uh, my my oh. friend that I went to the concert with. He's about as white as you can get, but he decided to have the, uh, which I find hilarious, he decided to have um, the DNA test, and it says he's 25% black, like 54% Akazani Jew, <laughs> and you would never know it. So I always make fun of him whenever we do these things, and he's, you know, because they're always talking about um, where he works, is, you know, racial diversity. I said, um, Sam, you... Um, you check all the boxes, literally. We can look at your background, and you've checked all of the boxes. Single-handedly, that's impressive. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have to laugh at the whole thing, which is... There's a, a gentleman I know. <laughs> I'm using the term very loosely. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say names, because uh, I know a few local people, Timmy, watch, watch whenever I do this. Um He's gay, which is not a problem. You know, everybody has the right to be miserable. <laughs> um, but he is he he is a self proclaimed Nazi. That reminds me of someone I know. And he's gay. 
And I'm like, they won't take you. Oh, yeah, the, the Nazis would love me. I'm like, um, no. No. <laughs> no. Not at all. I, I think, nope, the, the, yeah, but apparently a lot of neo-Nazis are gay. It's weird. I don't it's know. It's the you uniform. Know. It's well, the uniform. I, maybe. Maybe. It, I mean, not the one I'm talking about. He's just really stupid. It's Ernst Drone. Um anyone that's referenced that one. But um no, the uh the whole thing is at the end of the day, and this is what I always get mad at, I want to play damn games. I want to have barbecues, I'm willing to talk to anybody, and a lot of it just comes down to um I remember we were at the game store and there was a guy there and we were talking about I think it was War Machine or something. Anyway, we were and he was black, but he was from Atlanta. And you know, I forgot where, where we were. It's northwest of uh, oh, of uh, Chicago, but it was right there by one of the game stores. And we were talking. He says, "God, I hate it here. People aren't honest about their feelings." He says, "They're just as racist as they are in the South. You just don't know it." And they'll, you know, that's what some of the complaint that he had was at least it was overt in the South, so he know he knew who to avoid and who not to. And then that Romanian lady I was talking to one time, you know, and I was over in a. Middle Eastern, I guess it was Middle. It had a lot of Middle Eastern um, on the like it had like all the restaurants were Middle Eastern. Anyway, yeah. um, but it, but it was really close to there, and so she decided to take me around because she was a big city girl and I am not in any way, shape, or form. I I'm suburb big city or a girl, both. Um, <laughs> both. That's the right answer. <laughs> he says, "What? What are you not?" Well, you know. Um, Neither. I've had some people say I have nice legs, but that was years ago. No, <laughs> but but anyway, the uh, the whole point was, um, but then she was going over. But yeah, it's I went what because I was used to the South where I've seen a lot more overt, but it's 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 different. A lot of people hide stuff, and I, what I couldn't believe was just how um, racially divided Chicago was. I didn't you know I didn't understand just how bad it was because I'm used to. Living down here, and yeah, there's a little bit, but people tend to be treated like human beings. I, I mean, as individuals, so they, right. they, they one thing versus the other. But I was like, oh my god, it was like you know, both black. Your father did this. You don't know my father. You don't know what he did, and you're wrong because my father came from a very poor background and worked his way up. But people always look at the end. But yeah, I was like, who are you? You know, it, it's 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 the weird thing that that I think I hate saying it somewhat. A lot of this racism is taught and it's encouraged. And it's really done a lot of this by the media where they want everyone to fight with each other. And I'm just like, no, I don't care. RPG Elite looks about as cool and so, like everyone I grew up with. In fact, I think he was ex-military too. I'm like, this is like the kind of person I grew up with everywhere. And and yeah, I, I get so tired of that. I mean, well, you yeah. know, it's all about, you know, uh, agendas and then you know before the time of clicks it was still about you know the the you know the viewership and, and and the you know the ad revenue from from commercials and nielsen ratings and all that crap has been going on a lot longer and more insidiously than than most of us maybe well, not they here but the maximum amount of value and things that are valuable to them don't necessarily have to mean money they can lose money but if it if what Promotes they the have agenda are pushing has more value, because the I'm not going to say the agenda, because I it just sounds wrong, but what they're pushing is more valuable to them than actually making money. They can go bankrupt, and the value that they have lost from going bankrupt is nothing compared to what they have gained through pushing what had made them bankrupt in the first place. No, no, no. The thing is, they aren't going bankrupt because they're making sure they can get. No, if they oh. went bankrupt, oh. I'm not saying that they will. If they went bankrupt, it would still wouldn't mean anything to them. Well, you know what they win. Is, is when they start finding out they're losing power, they freak out. I mean, that's what amazes yeah. me. I mean, all you have to do, being slightly political, look what happened in Martha's Vineyard, and yet I worked on the border, and I would talk to the people literally on the border, and some of them, and we're talking like a mile away from Mexico, literally. And yeah. they're like, oh, I haven't gone there in seven years. I went, holy, and they, you know, and what it really came down to is they didn't like the human trafficking. And they felt sorry for the people that are being human trafficked, but they didn't want these people coming across. And actually, it was interesting seeing them just how the voter turnout was from one from 2016 and 2020. It jumped a huge amount. And 
you just have to say, yeah, that's because everyone, human beings, I don't care where you're from, generally want security. They want to raise their family and they want to have be friends with their neighbors. And that's the yeah. You know, I, I watched a certain rally just the other day. Actually, it might even been today. And uh, this individual who we all, I'm sure, can imagine who was saying, you know, the end of the speech that he always does. And the audience was uh, applauding after each key word. But when he said safe again, the crowd went absolutely ballistic. Just, just, I mean, 10 times more audible than the other words like rich and wealthy and prosperous and strong. No, 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 no. Let's just get back to safety. Can we get back to that? And, you know, once we're on that, you know, tier, can we, we, we'll go up from there, but can we get to the baseline most important thing? And it just blew my mind. I'm just like, wow. You know, cause I was waiting for that. That was the word in my head. I kid you not. I'm like, yeah, um, all those things are cool, you know, but if we're not safe, nothing matters. It's like they say, you know, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. Well, if you don't have safety, you've got even less. Well, it, it, here's what I found interesting you know, when you actually look at it. Because I've talked to Afghans. I've talked to – actually, we sometimes got into religious discussions, oddly enough, when I was talking to the Afghans. Yeah, I mean yeah, – it makes it, sense. It, it, it's interesting. And um, when you actually start talking to people, and and it's the – at the end of the day, whenever I hear anyone talk about civil war, I'm like, you people have no conception of what civil war means. You don't have power or you have it for only hours a day. You're terrified of leaving your house. I said, no one wants that. And these people are trying to push it one way or the other. I said, stop it. It's, I, I, I've been to these areas. It's horrible. And you're going to have to go through, and then you're going to have to find like-minded people. And so I, I said, you know, I'm, I, if a need be, if I can't, you know, my ex and I get along well enough. If I had to, I could retreat there. But now I've bought enough of my land for myself. I can take care of myself. My neighbors cool as can be, and a lot of stuff is done, you know, above board, and you have to. And that's the problem I think in many cases is these people growing up in cities, people can can pick up and leave, but when you have a neighbor next to you, and he owns property and you own property, you kind even if you don't necessarily like each other. Though to be honest, my neighbors are great. You start having to keep your word. You can't be a psychopath and do stuff and leave because people the word gets around and everyone knows you. And whatever advantage you got from screwing someone over is gone within probably a week. And, and that's the thing that, that people don't understand. Whereas, you know, in certain cases, well, I'll just pick up and leave. Yeah, you can do that and restart yourself. You can't do that if you're in a farmland because you can't pick up and move your farmland. It's there. Uh, you know, um, I'm fuck. When it comes to life, I in just life in general. I mean, life. I mean, not to try and quote uh, the Rocky Balboa movie, uh, second or last one, the mm -hmm. Balboa movie. But life will life will drag you down, kick you, and keep you down as long as it can. It doesn't need any extra help. It can do it all by itself. Then you, you know, and the trick is, you know, I I survive. I, I I'm great at survival. I can survive. But the trick is in life is to thrive and safety is an important thing. I need to know that my daughter will be taken care of if something happens to me. My, you know, and my ex-wife is batshit crazy, but she's a good mom. I, you know, there's, there's certain things that I, you know, I didn't have. When, like I give credit to my, my ex for this. She's a very self-reliant person. The problem is, is that that causes a lot of friction, you know, but she's kind of sensitive to what other people think, but yeah, I mean, those are the things that come down to it is, all right, you're going to have to do that. And like you said, it's anything bad that happens. You know, I, I, I remember when I was 18 and I was, was 18 or 19, I was 19. I was really depressed. So, you know, and I'm sitting over at the, uh, outside the hospital. The guy comes over and he has no legs. And he's about as happy and cheerful as can be. I talked to him. He was talking about how great his life had been and, and, I'll be honest, I tend to ask people questions you shouldn't ask. <laughs> You're with the right group. Uh, well, well I yeah. said, all right, so what happened to your, your legs? He's like, ah, oh, they got gangrene. Life happens. He just shrugged. Like, it was nothing. <laughs> and I just went, why do I feel depressed? Because I'm in great health. For, and I said, 
what you know and i think sometimes i think this is the problem when we have these twitter people is they have had no adversity in their life they've had they, they've been really insulated and they have lacked this mental resiliency so anything that they say they aren't used to people disagreeing with them they aren't used to that and they're not they're mentally fragile and, and Mary. Way, as much as we as much as we argue about them i really do feel sorry for them because when things turn bad these people cannot survive. They, they will have made, The problem for them is that they have faced no adversity. A guy I met recently who was an exchange student from Italy talked about this, how in America we have pretty much everything. Everything we want, we can get it. But they need something in their life to challenge them, but there is nothing, so they have made it up repeatedly. They well, keep making stuff up to challenge them, but there's nothing there. And they keep going after imaginary boogeymen that do, either don't exist or aren't a problem at all. In well, some cases are even a net positive, but because they have nothing to challenge them and they have everything they could ever want, they take these objectively good things and try to convince themselves and everybody as equally miserable around them that despite that they're extremely prosperous, they have forced themselves to be miserable. Well, the, the problem that we have in certain cases is we can always improve ourselves, but they don't want yeah. that because I mean, you know, and I, not that I'm doing my best right now. And, and I, I was, I'm not, I, I have a head cold right now, but I was thinking, but I try going swimming. I try going out in the cold, you know, whenever it's really cold, I'll go put in, you know, I'll go swim for about 15 to 20 minutes in like 50 degree weather um, or 50 degree. I, I know you're doing that. But I said, <laughs> if you want to know something, I will tell you this much. You do that, and you come inside, and, and I've always noticed this about myself. One is I survived. Number two is oh, yeah. it's, it's relatively safe. You get those endorphins, you come back, and you're like, you know what? If I can handle cold water, which is as merciless as you get, um, you know, it doesn't stop. It doesn't do any of this thing. Your body, unless you're really well trained, can't handle it as well. But hypothermia once we, kicks in. Well, yeah. it, it, 20 minutes is not enough for hypothermia at that temperature. Yeah, it's true. It's making it really cold. Well, usually. I mean, but then I come in. I said, I can deal with the rest of the world. What, 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 is, what is different about that? And I think that's the problem with these people is they want to externalize instead of trying to internalize. If they spent all that time they bitch on Twitter actually yeah. working on themselves, they'd be much happier human beings. Um, and that's yeah, what's they spent all the time that they, if they spent – even half the time, well, probably not half, but yeah. if they spent the time that they spent complaining about imaginary problems on Twitter on fixing themselves instead of attempting to fix problems which neither exist nor would cause any problems if they did, they would be much happier, much better off people. Well, and even when there is discrimination, I hate saying this, do not discourage people from bettering yourselves because even if the world's against you and you have all these negatives, improving yourself will always have benefits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, people, don't improve yourself because you don't need to improve yourself. You're perfect the way you are. It's the system that's keeping you down. No, no, it isn't. You need to be better. And if you think you are, you probably aren't. And that's why things are happening. Well, you can't just blame system, other people for all your problems. Even if the system is against you, you will yeah, still even be better improve yourself. Which, for I mean, a long time, it was. If the system is against you, Fix, fixing yourself isn't going to harm you at all, and telling people that they should isn't going to harm them at all. Oh, yeah. It's – it's you, nothing you're saying is absolutely wrong. I mean, I completely agree with everything. I mean, every once in a while you find yourself – not we as in this group, but I do – I know other people. I mean, growing up in Ireland during the 90s was no treat. It was no treat anywhere around the situation. If you don't believe me, look into it. It is rough. Uh, I, I I don't know much about the troubles, but I do know car bombing. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, well that was Northern Ireland. I don't know about right. the rest of Ireland. It, all Ireland just kind of All sucked. Ireland just kind of blew up. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. More or less. Um, so with that being said, I mean – and this chat has even said, uh, so, uh, good times make weak men. Well, America, we've had it pretty good for a while. We've had it really good for a long time, to be honest. 9-11 was a tragedy. But other than that, nothing horrible has really happened here in, 
what, 100 years, 200 years? I mean, uh, okay. I wouldn't say Pearl, Harbor. Years. Pearl Harbor was bad. Pearl Harbor, I, well, from an outside force, I should say. Pearl Harbor was really bad. Internally, you guys have been poking each other left and right since well, the beginning. But I, I wouldn't say we had a very... What? What do you mean you guys? Us, we have been poking each other. <laughs> I, there's a part of my brain that shows over in Ireland. You know, I was kind of raised over there. Well, well, at the end of the day, and I think this is a problem with humanity: is if we are not challenged or we do not push ourselves, we try fighting. We look for monsters to fight. I mean, that's I think just part of survival. And the problem is that it's just like your body gets the autoimmune diseases. If you aren't fighting things, you get a lot of autoimmune. You know, we, we were just built to look to fight. To, to find things to fight against, but yeah, so Nathan was right. That's why we're 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 uh, we're not seeing the aliens because they're terrified of us. Uh, well, I, you know what? I was reading Cosmic Trigger, mm -hmm. speaking of which, and the idea, and I know anyone that's listening out shouts, but Cosmic Trigger said the aliens are um, metaphysical; they're not physical. And so when people try saying he, everything, he also believes that too. I, I, I tend to believe that um, out of the 400,000 intelligent life forms the Hindus believe in, some of them are metaphysical, but some of them are completely physical. Well, obviously. And spread across the infinite galaxies, 400,000 actually doesn't seem like a lot. <laughs> I, well, and it's not that I doubt that, the, that we have intelligent life, you know, on other planets. I just think... You know, the question is, well, are they here? Well, maybe they are. Maybe they're communicating by different means. Cosmic trigger. I mean, there's some weird stuff if you start going into the psychedelics. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, um, if you're really looking at that. Now, that said, it's, I've never done them, so I can't say from firsthand experience. But, boy, when you listen to some of the things. But even then, you know, these people talk about peace and love, and you can see on just the anger towards one. And I went, okay, you need to learn to separate yourself from certain things and say, you know, the, the problem I think that we really have is – is people want to pretend that we're not part of, you know, this race. This is what I liked about D&D &D for years. Race didn't involve your skin color. Race was you were different species. You were the human race. Humans are both good and bad, all colors and shapes and forms. And that's what is human. And then you have like the Neanderthal race, if you really want to go in real life. But then we had the dwarven and elven race. I was like, this whole idea of that they want to bring in real world politics. But like, no, it's just like sports. I don't want real world politics in my games. I go to my games to escape. And actually the interesting thing was, and, and I think you said you about going on a vacation. When I go on a vacation, I feel recharged. I can come back to the rest of the world and face my, you know, the real world demons. <laughs> oh man. I, I went, I disappeared for my birthday week in which, you know, was that's why I missed the game versus the game, which is kind of sort of somewhat feel bad about at the same time. I, I don't, you know, because I needed to recharge, yeah. and camping to me is a way I can recharge, yeah. But at the same I time, I mean, I was there, but you know, it was fun, it rained the entire weekend, but I got to get drunk so with I got get I got able to get drunk and hang out with some really cool people that I haven't seen in almost three years. But you got to do that sometimes, and you have to say, okay, you, but you notified them beforehand, right? It's not like oh, yeah, yeah, I told them. I, I let them know. I, I, that, that's the problem that I have is, is any game or anything else. I, I, I used to say this years ago. Uh, maybe means no. I had too many people say maybes, and I always took that as, oh, they might show up. And I, I said, no, if I got older, maybe means no. It's just they, they're, they're afraid of confrontation, and I'm used to, like, well, tell me, are you going or not? Yes or no? I need to make plans. And, and oh, oh maybe, yeah. And I said, if, I, if anyone tells me, maybe I said, well, okay, maybe it's also a cultural thing, believe it or not. Um, I learned a long time ago, uh, especially among Latinos, they'll never say no about coming over. They'll say maybe, but they won't say no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, that's it's, fair. I mean, I get that. But anytime I was like hypothetically, not hypothetically, because this happened a few times. If I ask somebody out for dinner, if I or can I take you out sometime, maybe I automatically just took that they weren't interested. That's a no. That's a soft no. And I just moved on with my life. Which then I get married, and my ex-wife was like, "No, a maybe is a maybe." I'm like, "No, a maybe is a no." 
Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's it, it maybe may, may mean a maybe to you, but there's no obligation. Like if you say yes, you know, it says right. for the RSVP. There are times I've told people, look, it's a firm maybe. I said, take it as a no. If I'm going to show up, I'll let you know beforehand. But the other thing is I remember going on dates for here is I, if I got the, the lady's phone number, I would text her as soon as I left my house and say, this is what I'm looking at. This is where I plan on being. And so then there was no question about, and, and it was fine because someone would get mad like, well, we're supposed to be at four. Why are you texting me at three? I'm letting you know I left. So if I'm, if I'm running late because of traffic, you know that I, I, I'm doing something and it's just basic common courtesy. And I think that's part oh, yeah. of we have. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of common courtesy. I really, I, I try to always help withhold it, you know, um, you know, not to quote Hannibal Lecter yet again, but I really don't mind. Rudeness is an epidemic. It, it is. It is. That is entirely true. I never thought I'd agree with that, but yes, that is true. Yeah, everything a Hannibal, a Hannibal Lecter, you know, a, a cannibal, uh, a fictional <laughs> cannibal, I should say, you know, and everything he said when he said, well, you know, you have to understand <laughs> that the the author was trying to make Hannibal as likable as possible, despite the one or more horrible <laughs> things about the character. Otherwise. <laughs> They would have hired a completely different actor and had him act a completely different way. Oh, and uh, just Sir Anthony monster. Hopkins. Yeah, Sir Anthony Hopkins. I've read all the books, but yeah, you're right. Sir Anthony Hopkins is amazing. You know, I'd watch anything that he's in. I basically watch almost everything he's in. Um, yeah, with Hannibal Lecter, his main thing is he hate he ate rude people. And he was like, okay, well, That's there's still there's cannibalism. That doesn't make it okay. No, no, it's not. It, it, no, it, it's it's the. But I, I said just common courtesy. There's some things as you get older, you start realizing you didn't do it. But like for my friend, when I drive down to see him, he's an hour away. I text him, "Hey, man, I'm leaving right now." That gives him an idea of I'll be in an hour because we don't really set firm times. I'll say I'll be down, and sometimes it's like, "Hey, man, I got a headache because I I woke up too early or something. I'm gonna sleep." But he always knows. When I leave, it gives him an idea of what he can do, where he can be. You know, it's just I don't just pop in on him, even though I can't. I mean, I can just drive down any time and see him. But it's really things just as a common courtesy of like, oh, Waddle's going to be here in an, in an hour. Okay, fine. You know, that's that gives him an idea. I I think that that's one of those things. But I have another friend of mine. He wants everything really formalized because he wants everything perfect. And I said, dude, I don't care. I don't come over for your food. I come over for your company. I said we can hang out anytime. Now, Billy, he has like a one-year-old now, so it 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 does do that. But it's a thing, yeah. I get that. I mean, but, if I was hypothetically for some reason uh, unknown to me, I just said, "Hey, I want to hop on a plane and go visit, go to Texas. Uh, go visit, you know, go to Rom uh, yeah. Romstein last night, <laughs> right?" And I was going to meet up with you. I was going to meet up with Bruce and a few other people I know in Texas. I would text you guys and let you know, hey, I'm on the airplane. Hey, I'm off the airplane. Uh, hey, I'm at my hotel. Not because I care that you know what I'm doing. It's just you guys know that he is in town and this is where he's at. Well, even when I pick up my son, I text my ex. We're leaving now. She knows. Right. And she knows that because, it, I mean, she's an hour away and we meet halfway. It gives her an idea. And then, it, well, there's two things. One is, you know that we didn't forget the time. Right. Like, this is that if something's going on, I she could say, hey, look, I can't make it. Let's push it back a half an hour or something instead of sitting there, you know, at a gas station waiting to, to trade him off. <laughs> but, but no, and, and, and like Shadow was saying, you got to be involved with your kids. That's the one thing that amazed me is I came back from Iraq and I went, what the hell is my kid doing? I said, I got to get more involved with him. Because I talked to him every day, but he, he, you know, there was no one there to like set him straight. And the one time I did this, he was bad mouthing his mom. And I said, all right, you do this again. I'm going to come down there. He didn't believe me. And it was, so he did it late at night, which during the work day, I was like, oh, I'm going to kill your kid. Anyway, (laughs) He did that, and I just drove down, and 
I, I pull up to her driveway and he's falling on the ground crying. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, you know. I you know, I to see it. My daughter my daughter has a hard time talking to her mom. She talks to me. And I mean when it comes to girl stuff, I'm like, hey. <laughs> But I'm there. I, I even I, I like no great answers. I'm listening to her, and that's part of the trick too. And she loves torturing me. Oh my gosh, she loves torturing me, Dad. I'm now uh, twelve. You know what that means? I'm like, yeah, it means you're twelve. You're not a teenager yet. Well, pretty soon, you know, you're going to go buy me things. I'm like, you can shut up anytime now. And she just picks on me about and she. But that's just our relationship. We give each other hell. And um, God, she's better at it than I am. Uh, <laughs> I, well, what I think it's funny sometimes. That makes sense. Is, is you look at, uh, I've known a few women like this, or a few girls, where their, where their father was at a lower standard, and they yeah. would just be like, no, Dad, you can't do this. And, you know, it would kind of, like, I, I mean, you're like, how in the world did you get your daughter Saying what a piece of I'm not saying this is for you, Connell, but but you're kind of a piece of crap if your daughter's said as straight as can be and you know, right down the middle. It's like an act of rebellion to say, I am not going out with the bad guys, I'm not doing this, I'm not getting tattoos. Well, my daughter came out uh almost three months ago now and says, Dad, is it okay if I don't, you know, if I, I find myself that I've attracted to women? And I'm like, yeah, sure, that's great. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I don't like guys either. And you know, it was a high five moment. I, you know, what I thought was funny is my, uh, I had a friend of mine, and her daughter was like, I am a lesbian, and so my friend's like, oh, we're doing this, and I said, your daughter doesn't know what the hell she is. I said, give her about four or five years, and yeah, after four or five years, her, she, her, she, they talked about marriage and everything. They broke up, and the, what did she do? She goes around sleeping around with guys, but. She doesn't know what it is, and the, that's the problem I have with a lot of the society is they're pushing people over one direction or another and saying people don't know, and especially when you're young, you're very um, valuable and vulnerable to being brainwashed. Yeah, it, it, it's, just, it's just a phase until it's yeah. not a phase. But, yes. Right. Well, and, and it's one thing to do that, but, but whenever you start seeing people, you can tell when people kind of get brainwashed in certain ways. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going, look, you don't really know what you feel because you have all these external forces pushing you in a direction. When you remove those external forces, then you're going to find out who you really are. And I mean, I think, yeah, well, no, that makes sense. I mean, I mean, people in my generation have been pushing by pretty much every mainstream force on earth to go a certain direction because, well, they want people, they want children going in that direction because. Well, a variety of different reasons, but misery loves company. Yeah. I don't see it, but I, I, I think, and you know, I don't look for it. I, I just basically keep my nose down and do my job, come at home, hang out with you guys via the internet, do whatever I need to do, go to bed, and re, you know, do the whole mess all over again. So I don't go out looking at it and purposely look at it. I'm like the other day. I'm not. This is. I'm not trying to start an argument with anybody, and I've been really trying to stay away from playful stuff myself. <laughs> Was there was this guy on TV, huge Trump supporter, huge Trump supporter, has a shirt. Surprised he didn't have Trump for life tattooed to his forehead. Huge. I mean, huge, sorry, it's just huge <laughs> guy, right? I mean, and he's like, so uh, the guy's like, who do you think is the worst president ever? He says Obama, and I'm like, okay, whatever, you know. I'm listening. And you the know, like, Obama was fine, but then I found out who he gave guns to. Well, let me finish. Uh, well, I'll yeah, we'll get back to that here in a second. Uh, eh, probably not. Anyways, probably not, yeah. um, that's my ADD brain working for me. Anyways, the guy says Obama was the worst president ever, and it, and the guy's like, why? Well, he was in office during nine eleven, and he didn't do anything. He was always on vacations. And I'm like, stop, rewind, and play. I well, see, and that's the thing I hate about so much of it is, you know, I have a friend of mine who's a big Democratic supporter, and he, he <laughs> I like says, how you just uh, went down. <laughs> well, 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 here's the problem I have with both sides. And I have had a friend that was a big, you know, at the end of the day, I hear one thing as well is it don't, you know, you complain this about under Trump, but Obama did the same thing. And they're like, What? And I said, Look, 
I have real complaints. Stop, leave the personality out. There are certain things that bug the hell out of me. OPM, you allowed the thing with OPM where all of my information was put on the internet and, and spied on. There was, the, I mean, I, I mean, I can go through all these lists. I said, so don't give me this thing. I said, Let's talk about the issues one way or the other. And that's what I tried doing with my son. And I said, I don't, you don't have to like the personality. I said, that's the worst thing you can do because there are too many people. It's just like the, how do I want to say this, especially for women for this. It well, it's like, it's like having favorite actors. Yeah. They're pretending 24 seven. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. It's all, these, it's all these women that are complaining about men with the with the silver tongue, and then they're like, "Well, they just abandon me." Yeah, yeah, okay, that's a politician. Thank you very much. That's why you have to remove your emotions from it. I said, you know, they're, they're bad things. I, I that's one of the things I said is look at what the policies are and get over it. But but regardless, is that? It, but it's funny listening to it, and you hear these things. We had no scandals. I'm like, you really the OPM scandal. That was a huge one. It released all your information out there on the internet, and it was. It was I mean, yeah. I mean, there was shit Fast that went and wrong. Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. Anyone? Oh yeah, yeah. There was that one. The, the well, and the problem that I have with a lot of it is, and this is why you know, look for deep state. It's the same thing. Of, how come it seems like every time we vote for someone, none of the policies change? I said it's because there's they, a reason for that. Yeah. Well, exactly. And I said. You know, stop. It, the one time you do get someone different, you freak out. I said, "Well, there's what you go for." And I said, hey, you, well, "Nothing changes if yeah. you keep voting for the same people." Um, who and nothing changes if you're too committed to one particular party or ideology to realize that the party or ideology which you've chosen is dumb, stupid, and they're not getting anything done. So you should either change it or realize that the system, which only allows for two parties and two mainstream ideologies which hates anything that differs from the two is dumb and stupid well and speaking of which connell and i both homeschool our kids right yeah so, so we get to we get Good. to isolate a lot of our children from some of these things i mean politics wise when i'm around my daughter i don't let her know that i i respect the office just because i don't like the scary orange man does not mean i don't respect him as the president of the United States. I don't like whip. Uh, what did I call him earlier? Uh, sippy cup. Sippy no, cup. No, not sippy cup. Hold on. Hear me out. <laughs> uh, Vic Wait, went, uh, Vic when did this happen? Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. Sippy yeah. Cup. Uh, uh, sippy cup. You know. Right. I don't like our current president, but at the end of the day, I respect the office. I'm, I'm going to be a little bit different. We were we were brought up not to trust authority from the very beginning of ourselves, which was the whole thing. And so they're like. I respect the office. I'm like, no, you're a civil servant. I expect you to do what's best for the people. And if you can't do that, I'm not going to. I mean, that sounds funny when everyone talks about it. I said, no, I, I used you're to. You're right. absolutely right. These roles in office and government, we're not supposed to kiss their asses. They're supposed to be kissing our ass. They work for me. I don't work for them. I'll respect the office when they actually respect us and uh, actually obey the laws. And from what I've seen in the last X number of years, yeah, uh, I'm not seeing that. So they can pretty much hold I hands moved, with Dan. I moved back once I moved back to nine states permanently. I think it was an office. Uh, Junior was in office. Yeah, Junior was in office. I'm like, this guy's a fucking idiot. And nothing against the guy. It just wasn't. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'll I'll respect the office when it's based on moral principles. Which it hasn't you. been ever in the, its entire history, but that's not true. No, no. Well, Washington, I mean, well, no. Well, Washington. Well, 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 I want to hear what Al has to say. Well, I mean, look, look, look at look at George Washington. He really turned down power, and I said, "Well, that's the kind of person you want in power is the one that turns down power," and and, and that's part of the things that get into. It. And there was you know a robust debate, but nowadays it's kind of you know well well the we're going to do this. I said, look, I don't, if I respect, you know, I'll respect the person in there. If you follow the rules, I don't even have to agree with you morally, but I'll respect the uh, office when you start following the rules that have been laid out for you when you start. But, but that's the problem I think really is, and people forget about this. Well, government doesn't work. If it's dysfunctional, it is working as designed. If it's not dysfunctional, then we have a problem, which is where we are now. And I think that's right. 
Anyway, I, I would rather switch it to some something else besides that topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, I got like maybe about forty more minutes before I'm going to turn into a pumpkin, and because I got to be at work at six o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah. So, with my career choice, uh, my clients, uh, because of it's a ho- I'm on upon the haunt of, uh, I'm blah, 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 blah. I'm upon the holiday season, and. <laughs> Uh, yeah, September fifteenth, guys. That's, that uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Go ahead, Connell, because you you brought some up that I want people to know about. Okay, uh, but anyways, I'm on holiday seasons. Basically, picked up, and they're going to start having more parties and stuff like that. And I cook, so I'm having to hire uh, prospects to work in the kitchen with me, which I don't want anybody in my kitchen. It's my kitchen. They can all fuck off and die. Um, <laughs> Uh, eat shit and live. Is I, listen, you don't. <sighs> okay, you and your dad. Uh, I, 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 your, your dad's a gun guy. The only person that your dad wants touching or cleaning or messing with his guns is probably you and your your dad. No one else. No, he doesn't want other people touching his shit. When I work in this kitchen, the kitchen's mine. I fucking designed this kitchen after the kitchen fired two years ago. This is my kitchen. Now I got to let these jerk offs into my kitchen, tell them, show them what I expect, how things are going to be done, and half these fuckers are probably I've I've um, interviewed have gone to one culinary, culinary college or the other. I haven't. So it's going to be a pissing contest because they think they're going to know more than me. I'm not happy. So that's what's going on in my life. <laughs> well, let me be the first to wish you all a happy holiday season because as of the 15th, for me, the holiday season is here. And I have a, a small eBay store that I've been running for over 10 years. And I learned – some valuable lessons. The, the two most important ones are come September 15th, it is selling season. If, so if you're going to buy something, you better get it damn quick because with the shortages that are planned and all the other issues, get it now or, or probably go without up until se- uh, February 15th, which is the selling season. So if you got something you want to sell, wait. This sounds like solid stock advice. <laughs> buy, buy, buy. Sell, sell, sell. No, I mean, buying, I, come, come, the day after Valentine's Day is when you start buying stuff that you actually want. Because that's when everybody has spent their, their entire wad over the last six months just going crazy for the holidays. And now all those collectors like us are going through their collection going, hmm, what can I get rid of to make a fast buck? And the further it goes along after Valentine's Day, you know, right there in the middle is a sweet spot where people are, like, getting pretty desperate. And nobody's got money to buy the cool shit like old out-of-print books or miniatures or games. That's when you really buy the cool shit. Right now, you're just going to stock up for the holidays, get your ham, get your frozen turkey, whatever it's going to be. And, you know, be ready for the... That stuff, if you know, I already asked the little guy what he wants for Christmas because I need to start getting that shit before you know it gets too close to actually October, okay. November. So, I'm just asking just you because my, my son is as weird as can be. And I don't mean this in a bad way, I mean, the, 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 the kid is, kids are weird. No, yeah. no, I mean, I mean, for example, this is what he wanted for Christmas last year was a used three phase washing machine motor. Okay, that's I'm that's not, weird. That, that, no. I'm not saying my son, no, don't get me wrong. I love my son very much, but and and he, I said, well, I can buy you a new one, son. It's not that expensive. He's like, no, nope, I want a used one. I said, do you want two of them? No, I just want one. And and he was like, that's the best gift I got for Christmas. <laughs> Why? And I asked, was what was the purpose? Um, that's what he wanted. He wanted the, the, that's just the way my son is. When I say he, there's some strange things that he wants. Um, it's always, what did he do with it? What did he do with it? Um, take it apart, use it to build something else. 
Um, he wanted to hook it up and see things turn, and that's just the way. I mean, don't get me wrong. My son is great at that, but, you know, that's why we were joking about it. It's like, you know, if I want him to fix my stuff at home, it's fantastic. But if I want him to role play, um, well, so much for that. Anyway. I, 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 see, this is where I say you're in good company because I ask questions I probably shouldn't either. My oldest stepson is Aspergian, and he loves molders. He loves trains. He loves think, things of that nature. Uh, is your son on the spectrum at all? I all they called him was quirky when I had him tested. Now I think okay. he probably is, but the, the, at the end of the day, you know what it really comes down to is, you know, I would love for him to be an electrician or you know a plumber, you know anything trade trade related, and he can go from there. But I was like, but I, I laugh at it because all the things like like Shadow's talking about, I don't have to worry about really competing with anyone. Because he'll ask for for this, like, well, no, now to be fair, we live next to a honey farm. I say we live next to it's within ten miles, and I can buy like, and so I usually get him a gallon of honey, and then I get him. Um, his mother usually gets some gummy bears. And he she usually gets something like you said that's out of print, like uh -huh. Smurfs, something like that. I mean, just just like weird, you know, whatever whatever he liked for that. And then right, right. Usually, you know, like what he said for his birthday. What did he want? He wanted a an electrical ballast. For a um, for a fluorescent light, and so I said, "Okay, son. Well, how many do you want?" And he's like, "Well, I, said, I can buy you two because they're like twenty five bucks or so." I said, "We'll get you the best one." He's like, "It was the best present ever." It's like, "All right, whatever you want to do, son. If you're gonna hook up the house, I'm like, you're gonna come and wire it." I said, I, "I'm not too worried about him in the future for that aspect. I'm only more worried about." That's cool as hell. I mean, he's yeah. cool. Yes, that's I, I not my that's not my you know field of expertise. And uh, I can't even imagine what I would do something like that. If someone dropped it in my front yard and be like, the hell am I going to do with this? You know? <laughs> well, well, it'd, be, well, I, it'd be in the trash can like in a hot tick, you know? It'd be like, yeah, um, I, I get nothing, you know? <laughs> maybe, I'd take it, maybe I'd take it to recycle it, you know? But, uh, you know, if he can do something with something like that at this kind of age, dude, he is so far ahead of the curve with, 99.9% .9 of all kids in the United States right now who have absolutely, I mean, right now it is, they are so much like carbon copy clones of one another. It, it's, it's just, the only, it's, the only it's difference terrifying. is the hair color. Well, I mean, yeah. to be fair, you know, watching you and Jack do stuff. And I don't, I mean, I, I'll watch it 2x speed, to be fair. Just whatever I do, I, I watch everything at almost 2x speed. Um, and now, if it interests Why me, why exactly? Uh, because I can listen fast enough, and I don't have to waste. You know, I can get in twice as much. <laughs> but, but, but oh, I, okay. But, but I mean, I, but I, 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 I did read most of the Dredgen files. This at least the second half of all of them are two times speed, so uh, I won't blame you there. No, I mean, I mean, but but you guys, the stuff that you do, I'm like, well, that's really cool. If you want to save some money, but I think that that's one of the things that. How do I want to put this? Too many kids are just put out there and they have no direction. They have no one involved in them. Like you said, for getting fathers involved. Even though I'm not around my son all the time, he I do talk to him every night, just like we did tonight for the most part. Um, you know, and I, how are you doing? This is what I expect from you. This is what you're doing. And then, you know, he want to talk a lot. He want to talk for almost half an hour tonight, which is unusual. Usually he does that whenever he fights with his mom. And, uh, but, but the other part is, I don't know, if you ever... I don't know how your son likes this, but it, my son really enjoyed it when he was young. Was simply circuits. I don't know if you've ever done that to teach wiring. Uh, I wanted to, or at least maybe not. I wanted to, but I do want to, or wish that I did, but I never did. Uh, simply circuits. If you can, I get wish that. I did though. I mean, I have I have a copy right here, and this is a big one. And and I'm not saying it's the most exciting, but if you want to learn the basics of it, is uh, of course it's all dusty, but. You know, that's that's what it is. And it's very simple. It works for like all sorts of different age groups. Um, and you know, if Shadow's if Shadow's looking for something online, you know, to get to and you'd be interested, that would actually be kinda of cool to learn circuitry. Um, it would. Certainly it would. Yeah, yeah me and electricity don't, me and electricity don't get along. I don't know if you can <laughs> see it, but uh, there's right there that circle, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, <laughs> That's where I got struck by lightning, oh, and wow. 
And uh, before that, I was working in a, uh, I was uh, working in a hotel as a maintenance man, and uh, and it wasn't the first time I got lit up, but it was like the the second worst time I got lit up. I told the guy I was working with, turn off the power. He said, "See, I went to do what on my job. My screwdriver hit something, ba boom, and I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing electricity." For a good long time, and then bazap, I got I got lit up by Mother Nature. And the messed up part about that was I was all alone on a job site. They forgot to pick me up when I should have been taken to the hospital. It rained. Oh, I was out yeah. in the middle of nowhere, you know, with a smoking hole in my arm, and didn't get to do anything. Fortunately, there was some hydrogen peroxide on the site, and I just. Jeez, and no, uh, no, I, well, and just so the next day, the, the next day, they said, You want to go to the emergency room? I'm like, Nah, I'm good. Threw a bandage on it and just kept pouring peroxide on it until it went away. And so, I kind of try to stay away from stuff like that, even though, um, you know, I know, I, I know a little bit, you know, enough to, you know, but it just it was never one of those things that. That intrigued me, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, well, anything I, I, is a little scary, but if the little guy wants to do something, we don't hesitate. Oh, I, I noticed that. I mean, that's great. I, you know, I spent a. My son has his obsessions, which tend to be speakers, stars, volcanoes, and lights. Those were his obsessions, and um, those are all cool things. He he cycles through them, but um, but yeah, like I bought him a really nice telescope, an eight inch. Um, Celestron. We got one too. And, and and that was and where his mother lives, it's real dark, so that helps a lot. So we went over there and you know, he's he he, he can name it off. I thought it was funny because I took him over and said, Well, what should I get him? And um, we went over to a there's a there's an observatory about an hour and a half away. And the guy's like, Well, you need to get him a Dobsonian so he knows the stars and everything else. I said, Okay. Um, uh, I'll just go over there. <coughs> he knows the stars. I said, uh, son. Where is the uh, where's uh, Sirius? And he points into the ground at a certain angle. And he says, "Oh, it's down there." <laughs> and then and he goes over and he starts pointing out all the stars and everything. And the guy's like, "All right, your son knows the sky." And, and that was the uh, that was wow. Sky that was that sky is well, amazing. Sky yeah, go ahead, sorry. Uh, but 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 getting Sky Guide. I don't know if you guys have gotten Sky Guide. Um, it's like a five dollar app or so. It's really good for identifying the. Stars. I think his mom has it. Okay, I, I, I might look into that one. Um, wow, yeah. I mean, and I hope I'm wrong, but yeah, your son starts. Start, it sounds like my Laszlo, uh, yeah. which yeah. You know, so I mean, it very well might not be the case, but he sounds like my Laszlo because Laszlo, if I ask him, oh God, if I ask him anything on his room of interest, he will give you. A small dossier, I, and I'm okay with that. I suppose that's similar to me for to a lesser extent. I, I'm just saying I'm okay with him being that way. It's just uh, you know the times like like son, would you like to play this role playing game? No, Dad. <laughs> really? right. um, but 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 son, will you fix my dishwasher? Sure, Dad. <laughs> All right. So, no, I have a question for you, Jack. Though, really quick. Yes. You, you know. Um, what was that, Shadow? You didn't come in at all. Oh, I was going to say, um, if you wanted to play, have him watch you and your friends, maybe. Oh, I did. I did. One night. I, I did. And um, in fact, they tried to encourage him to play. And that's, <laughs> and really? that's fine. I mean, I'm not. I don't want to force my son to do anything because there's nothing. Oh no, 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 no. Just, just have it around. You know, that's, that's what I did. You know, uh, at one point I said, okay, we're playing because it, the, the time had come and he was, he was already there, you know? So, well, at this, at this yeah, point, yeah. I'm just going to put him into um, film camp because he really enjoyed that. And somehow, you know, I, I, he's, he's starting to like girls. So, yeah, hey, hey. To, <laughs> so I'm like, uh oh, but, but he was the only boy in film camp, he was the only boy in volleyball camp. So, I was like, all right, uh, so I'll, I'll well, get back the, to the, 
ball. Yeah, really you're 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 on the right track, dude. You just got to wait for grandkids. Uh, yeah, you just got to wait for grandkids. So I got a question uh, for you out there, Jack. Yes. I heard you uh, were a gentleman. And you walked some young girl home from school. Yes. What color was her hair? Blonde and black. Okay. Just curious. You're, <laughs> just curious. I said an odd question, but I completely understand it. No, no. Well, your dad kind of brought it up. I'm so proud of my son. He walked this girl home. <laughs> my mom was just about that. Whoa, no. Whoa. Oh. Turn that off. <laughs> Actually, I have to laugh, Connell, because one of the things that, you know, I've heard that if you want to talk to someone is to make sure you identify their eye color because then you look at them in the eyes. Oh, well, considering I'm colorblind, it's all about the same. Although fucking blonde, uh, people with blue eyes weird me the fuck out. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's, all it is is just a pupil. Oh really? Wow. Oh yeah, it's it's a, a special treat. My daughter has blue eyes. I'm like ah, demon child. <laughs> uh, Shadow has blue eyes as well, and so does my grandma. And I used to, but not anymore. So what was the girl's name? No, you had gray. Gray. Yeah, gray well, see, 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 little kids have the slate until they're about a year when their eyes actually form their their permanent color. Yeah, because my son. Yeah, it seems like mine changed like. Every single year, it, it it seems. Apparently, they're green now. I don't know. I got hazel eyes that turn green when I'm frisky, I've been told. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> That's weird. They'll go, they'll get a bluish tin when I'm really pissed off. Do yours get like even lighter when you're in uh, uh, chlorine, like a swimming pool? I think so. I don't know. Apparently, sometimes I wake up and, like, for a, a week or something, they're, like, yellow, like, bright yellow. Oh, my God. So, my mom, my mom, her, when she gets pissed, her eyes turn yellow, yellow. And I just know what it, I don't know exactly what it looks like, but my brother's like, you ever notice that mom's eyes change colors when she's pissed? I'm like, <laughs> uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of. Paying attention to her mom's eyes. It's like, yeah. I'm like, how yellow are we talking about? It's like, well, you can't see color. I'm like, I, doesn't mean I can't oh, yeah. ask the question. So, He's so, like, <laughs> pretty damn yellow. So, so Jack, are you yes. leaving that dance? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <One coming's coming laughs> up. He's like, oh my God, they're all looking over like, no, no. It, it's funny because. Learning how to dance sets you apart from so many other men. Um, it does. I mean, and you don't even have to be that great. The willingness to go out there and the fact that you can do basic puts you way ahead of other other men. Um, okay. At your age, it's going to be hands on hips. Their hands going to be on your shoulder, and you just kind of. No, 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 no. <laughs> learn, learn, learn to cha cha. Go, 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 go. Learning how to uh, salsa. Um, go. Go, go 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 learn how to do swing. Anything that yeah. does that, yeah. all those, and then if you can also do country line dancing or the country line. dance. Jesus. Yeah. Country line dancing. Jesus. No. Yeah, but we, we like it, but <laughs> man, that's that's the way to get women. It's you know, not it's not, not any wrong. different. It's not that much different from what I what you're doing when you're practicing your your uh, marching and your your turning and, and things like that for for you know drills. It's not that much different, and if no. you're doing that in your in your spare time, when I guarantee none of your fellow, I'm not doing it in my spare time. I'm doing it at pretty much every second that I can. If I turn, I'm I'm turning that way. This this is why I don't wear a watch anymore because I got up to the point that I would count on how fast I walked, and I went <laughs> no 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 that my life is so let so much less stressful when I removed a watch. But, so but no. But, yeah. But, 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 yeah, I haven't worn a watch. I haven't worn a watch in, in his lifetime. Yeah, I don't need one. I don't I even. Know. I don't even put batteries in the clock. She doesn't. But I'm. I'm certain that's not because of any weird health reason or stress reason. He's just too lazy. He said that he he doesn't need it because of the lockdown. But the lockdowns have been over for way too long for him to keep using that excuse. The <laughs> no, I still have. I still have a Corona clock that I refuse to put a battery in. 
it, it's I mean, here's the sad thing. When I look at it, I already have my phone, I have the television, I have my my iPad here. That's it. I don't need any more things. I'm already um, going through there. At that point, I really just go by the sun. And, you know, with exception for work, like, okay, we're going to get up. But, but yeah, Jack, we're trying to like, help make sure that you separate yourself far and above all the other men of your age. The weight you know? from the chaff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, well it, it makes a difference. It's hilarious because I remember just being able, just being willing to go dance made a huge difference. As oh, far God, as, yeah. And, and women are always looking for men that can dance. I had a, I had a gay friend. He was overweight. Okay. He, you know. He went over, but because he could dance better than all of the other men, he got phone number after phone number from these women. And what was hilarious is he looked at him like, eh, because he was gay, he didn't care. He just tossed him away. <laughs> when I was doing boxing and rugby and a few other sports I was into over in Ireland, my grandma was like, I didn't want, you know, my grandson is not going to be a dumb brute. Why do you have a spider on your face? <laughs> what? No, we're, we're making a blush. We're making a blush. This is all working. Anyways, so my grandpa, uh, my grandma put me in dancing, uh, swing dancing, uh, classical dancing, and stuff like that. And it didn't hurt my boxing all because I was just more leg work. And yeah, I when I was like, uh, when I was younger than him, I used to go to the CB radio breaks, which were uh, get-togethers for Channel Nine React. Um, on the CB radio, the emergency channel, all those guys would get together at a bar uh, on a certain night of the week. And of course, you know, I was 10 years old. So my mom would drag me along. And from the age of 10 to about 13, I learned, I learned to dance mostly disco and things like that. Um, real, real freaking early. And uh, yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad thing. Unfortunately, then I got interested in rock and roll and heavy metal. And that shit went out the door. Cause that you don't dance to that, and um, no, you just don't. Really. And well, so it became yeah. completely unimportant. Uh, and through college, it was just there, there were, there were, that was just not a thing anymore. You know, the music that would be played at the school dances and stuff. Nobody danced. If they danced, it was like, you know, this shit. And yeah. you know, that that doesn't go over well with the with the lady folk. So, <laughs> you know, you know, our high school dances were mosh pits. Until they figured out what we were doing, and then they're like, "Nope, nope." And th th then I went to a different high school, and that, that we didn't even have dances there. So uh, when I was, in, I was see, I took dancing. Even, I went back into dancing even when I got into the states. I was taking dance lessons, and back when I was in high school, uh, a lot of boy bands were really popular, and a lot of the boy bands were doing dances. And so the instructor had us learn the dances to a lot of these songs. Uh, that was Roy Poplar's, and there used to be a place called uh, Revelations that I used to go to to dance. And this is why we should do Footloose, anyways. And uh, you got a long I, way to your birthday, pal. Hey, my birthday, hey, 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 I haven't cashed in my birthday present yet, there, Bubba. I thought that was Conan, yeah, it was Conan. Shit, you're right. You know, Christmas is coming up. Um, Oh my God. <laughs> I'll send you some plastic first. <laughs> ah, that's right. Uh, but man, learning how to dance and going to clubs. It's not a bad and, skill. It's not a bad skill to have. No. You know, especially, you know, for like what you're talking about, you know, fi fighting and stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know. It doesn't get hurt. Overlooked. It, yeah, it, it will come in, you know. Handy, even if it's only one swing, you know, that you dodge. You know, you can blame I, it on your favorite song, you know. I, I, or I don't, I don't, chalk it up to your favorite song. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was taking fencing, but, but yeah, dance. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is you don't have to learn modern dance. How did you, you do learn. that? Did you guys see that? Do what? You literally teleported to the other room like a blink. <laughs> no, I didn't. That was a long time. No, for us it wasn't. It literally blink. You were in in your room. I'm not even kidding. What? I, I well, no, no, I turned off my camera because my mother was talking to me, and I also well, muted. You turned off your camera because we were making you blush. No, <laughs> she she's doing something right now. I asked her to do something, and then she complained about it, and then I told her not to do it, and now she's doing it anyways. 
It's, it's but, well, Jack, Jack, I think that it froze on your father's side because I saw you go away for, you know, like a minute or two and then come back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is just, okay good. But, uh, I'm but, not losing my mind. It's just him. Uh, well, well, you know what? If you could, that would be even cooler. You know, at that point, there's a party trick you can do. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. I, I wish. I wish, but no. Urza, did any of you guys see uh, Lethal Weapon White? Was it two? Yes, I saw both. Where Mel uh, Mel Gibson was able to pop his arm out of joint and put it back and get out of the strip uh, out of the straight jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I popped my uh, uh, shoulder, my uh, right shoulder out of joint years ago, and I was in college. And one of my friends, for some strange reason, had a straight jacket, and he's like, "I bet you can't do this," and I'm like, "I bet you I can." So. That uh, uh, house party trick you're talking about, that makes for an interesting party trick there. You know, the other one you can do, well, there's a lot of different tricks you can do. One is you can do the splits. You used to be able to do those. I've, got, I've done them once in my life, and I've been trying to stretch out my legs to do them again. I can get off like about three inches or four inches off the ground. That's as low as I can go. I, uh, I could never do the whole Van Damme splits going this way, but I could always go long ways. I mean, it's fine because little party tricks that you can do that get everyone talking. <laughs> um, don't do the slugging contest because that's just painful. <laughs> I don't know what that is, and I will take your word for it. Slugging, you know, punching and punching the face. Oh, yes, that doesn't sound like something I wish to do. Ever. <laughs> oh, there we go. I, uh, I've done that a few times. I... Like I said, I've been punched in the face a lot. Um, <laughs> and for some reason, it seems like I can tell. I just don't know why. <laughs> no. Uh, when I was like, it's college, not something very – it just – it seems like it. Oh, but I don't know. When I was in college, uh, the local bar I used to go to had amateur fight up uh, uh, fighting, amateur box night, boxing night, and I never went professional. And so there's never really – there wasn't a professional record of me anywhere. Uh, so I signed up and they always had a purse at the end of the month. It's like, who, who's ever able to do this, you know, wins X amount of bouts, uh, gets, you know, $500. And I, I signed up. That was my party trick. I could take a beating. Ma? Shadow, you look like you're about ready to pass out. No, no, not at all. I, no, I, I got, I got at least, I got at least, uh, Two episodes of uh, Blake Seven to get through tonight. I'm rewatching uh, Reacher. Hmm. Never saw it. Okay, it's on Amazon Prime. It's actually, not that bad. I've, I've heard a lot of people like Reacher. Let's see. I've, I'm trying to get through Primal slowly but surely. You know, uh, you speak of Primal, and there was a guy on YouTube. That was doing a, a, a theory crafting, and he was uh, saying the, the character off Primal is actually the caveman off of Dexter's laboratory. I, I don't doubt it because it's the same. Um, it's the same guy who did Dexter's lab. In oh Sanford. God! So it is true. I, I don't know if it's exactly true. I just I'm just saying it's. Well, you want to talk about a cartoon, and I enjoy it. I'm not saying everything's perfect about it, but I enjoy it. But, but they do not hold back on parts like ripping bodies apart and s- slicing through people and stuff. It's um, this. Hmm. It, it, it's I enjoy it, but you know, it, it's uh, it's different for the second one. I've been trying to get into it, and then of course Rick and Morty. Um, oh, I love Rick and Morty, but Rick I, and Morty's not, you know. <laughs> I don't wish to speak on the topic. Uh, it's, that cartoon's not meant for you. <laughs> not sure it is not. You. You're right. Have you heard the uh, "Say so you're not a Nazi" speech? Yeah. Um, after after that speech, I'm never watching anything. Oh my god! This is Well, <laughs> well, not to say ever again because I never did. But it, okay, there's been a lot of really interesting cartoons over the years, to say the least. Uh, Ren and Stimpy. Oh. Uh, you know what? You know what? You're the first person that's mentioned Ren and Stimpy in like decades. I remember Ren and Stimpy. Oh my God! It, they're like, why don't they mention that nowadays? It, it, I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna say one thing. 
the insidious flying butt pliers. <laughs> I just remember the one about the Canadian Mountie. Yeah. When he decided to be the Canadian Mountie, that was my favorite. Don't piss on the electric fence. <laughs> I, I that, nowadays it'd be like, oh, it's making fun of what I'm, I'm like. Yeah, so what? I, 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 mm-hmm. I, things are funny. At a certain yeah. point, it's the same reason I love. Um, oh, um, Pinky in the Brain. Oh, oh yeah, the, yeah. The, the, classic, classic. I, I, love, I, I was like, oh, okay, but you know what? And the, I like to sit down and laugh. And it's the same thing that I used to like Family Guy until he stopped making fun of both sides, you know, for the for several seasons. I was like, he's actually kind of gone back, not so I, much, it, but he's kind of gone back. I well, guess that explains by all. Well, well I mean, you got, we've had two restaurant. years of comedy gold. How could he not? The well, honestly, it feels like most of his energy right now is going into his outer space show. The Orville, what I saw, wasn't bad. Um, the, Fucking Bruce likes it. I, I enjoyed the, the beginning part, but I haven't seen it. To be fair, it's, I haven't had a TV. I watch almost nothing unless it's... I, the only reason I have HBO Max is because it's part of my phone because I wanted to have a you know a hot spot. I, I um, don't want HBO Max. <laughs> that, I, I, I enjoy it. But I mean, that's the only thing that I've I've looked at. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll enjoy watching some of it. But but yeah, it's the I, the writing for the shows has gone down so much. That's what gets me. When you when you you know I know I know Max doesn't like Farscape. I like some of Farscape. I love some of the I ideas. I love that. Farscape. I, I but I love Babylon Five. I love yeah, that's great that, too. And, and you look at the writing now. It is. I even enjoy, you know I know he doesn't like it either, but I still enjoyed Battlestar Galactica, even though it got kind of weird. But the, the but, '80s part sucked, but everything else was good. Yeah, well, I mean the modern one. I enjoyed the modern one. And I, oh and I, no, I watched the whole. I watched the whole series. Yeah. I have season one. I. I got to meet Edward James almost, and that's what we talked about a couple months ago. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I enjoyed. My mom and I enjoyed it thoroughly. The last episode was weird, but I went with it. You know, like okay, it's over. Okay, cool. Um, it'll probably be a long time before I ever want to watch it again. Um, you know, to because you know when you when you're done, you know everything. And it's all pretty memorable. So watching it again is going to be hard because you're going to know the secret. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what was what was the guy's name? Um, the one that played, um, you know, uh, Adama's son in the original season. That they brought him back as Zarek. Do, do you remember Apollo? I don't, I don't remember the actor's name, but I know what you're talking I, about. I remember seeing him over at College Station one time, and I think he died at sixty. I mean, he died several years ago, but. But I, but I thought but he was very personable, you know, when they had him over at the, uh, I guess the Richard the- Hatch. Yeah, that was his name. Yeah, Richard Hatch. Okay. Very, very personable guy, and he was just sitting there talking to students, and it wasn't. It was a small group because it was just on the college campus. And I was like, okay, very personable. I didn't actually go up and talk to him, but very personable um, for doing that. And um, but I, I, I look at the writing for some of that, and. One is I thought he did an excellent job, but I liked on what they were doing for some of the things in there. But nowadays, mm-hmm. I look at a lot of these series, and they're just so – they're afraid of offending anyone. They're afraid of doing any kind of humor. And humor is always going to be offensive. That's to be the funniest part. If anyone's watched The Boondocks – Oh, yeah, I love Boondocks. Humor is, based on, humor is based on two principles, making fun of yourself and making fun of others, yeah. period. And shock value. And if you, Oh, yeah. If you can't, if you can't do either of those, or well, if you're only if you limited down to something as simple as those two things, then yes, you're absolutely right. Everything can fall under those two categories. Of course, the making fun of yourself thing is a—it's two categories. One is really small compared to the other one, which is massive. But making fun of somebody else doesn't necessarily have to be another person. It could be another thing. That's what yeah. all humor is. It's making fun of something. You don't even it doesn't even you don't even need to boil it down to making fun of yourself or making fun of others. No, it is just making fun of something. Speaking it can be you, what? it can be somebody else, it could be a thing, it could be a collective of things. It just has to be a thing that exists. It doesn't have to physically exist, just something that is out there, an idea, a person, you, 
anything, if you make fun of it, that is, you can't not make fun of something in comedy. Okay, because by virtue of making a joke, you have just made fun of something. Connell, at some point, have you seen Airplane? Yes, uh, one and two. <laughs> I mean, that to me would be a great. <laughs> I, I, some of those things is I, I, you watch them like I have to watch it multiple times to get most of the jokes. The same thing with the Blues Brothers. Oh God! I mean, every time I watch the Blues Brothers, I'm still picking up shit I I missed. Uh, Airplane one and two, uh, same story. I have to watch it, you know, to catch everything. You know, the, I, the, some of the simple. Uh, humor in it is like when the shit hits the fan, they actually throw <laughs> what looks like shit on the fan and a fan, and it's just it's just dumb humor, but I think it's funny. Well, like I, when the, the nun walks, the walks through the, the airplane bouncing the, the guitar off pe- the back of people's heads. You know, that was just, I'll never forget that. That is so dumb, but it was just classic. Oh, oh the, the, the part with the line, where they had the line where she's getting hysterical. And one person slaps her, and then the next person comes in line, and you just see like like the the brass knuckles, and the crowbar, you know, and stuff like that. I'm like, I, mm-hmm. I still love the uh, well, you know, when when okay. the autopilot is deflating, and uh, what is it, Elaine or whatever has to start trying to inflate it. Uh, <laughs> and, and they're trying to find somebody who speaks jive. Oh yeah, I remember that part too. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought it was I, – I mean, I've seen it years ago, and then when you watched it a few years – you know, a few months ago, I was like, this is just great. And you look at the movies nowadays, and it seems to they, – they, they don't throw in enough gags. To me, I want to watch a comedy movie over and over and over again so I can catch – I know. When was the last great comedy movie that came out? Think about it. Um, okay. Okay. Uh not Morgan. You have Freeman. to go back a ways, don't you? No, not that far. Early uh, mid two thousands. Fifteen years. <laughs> Think about uh, that. Not, we used to not, get one every freaking year. Oh, we no, used to get not, some not, blockbuster but, freaking comedy movie every year, and then all of a sudden, you know, people's you know buttholes clenched so tight that they can't fucking, make a joke. Right. Since the humor, uh, people's sense of humor fucking dried up, dried out. Uh, what was it? Uh, Hein, uh, not Hein, uh, well, pfft, what movie am I thinking? Shit. Formula 52 with uh, Samuel Jackson. I haven't seen that one. Oh, Formula 51. I didn't like that one. I thought it was cheeky for what it was. You know what? I didn't mind the Kingsman. If you want to talk about one that was kind of tongue in the Kingsman didn't bother me too much. Oh, well, you know, if you take the password, the, if you actually. At the end of the movie, where the princess promises blank, yeah, yeah. And if you actually watch in the movie, if you look at the numbers he push, it actually spells out that too. <laughs> I, um, so yeah, see, I, don't, I, I haven't watched the new Kingsman, but I, I yeah, just, it's. I can't. Every time I hear "Old Country Road" by a Bob Dem, no Denver, John Denver, John, John Denver. Yeah, I, I just I, I start singing along. I I, I can't help it. Then it's, they have it. it's a great song. Then they have that uh, Merlin sing it in the freaking movie. I'm like, son of a bitch. Well, I mean, I mean, if you look at some of the stuff, and I'm going to mention, you know, you had Airplane, you had the Naked Gun series. I liked UHF. You Blazing had, Saddles, Young Frankenstein. Yeah, I mean, I watched, even though I know you redid it, the producers the, with, uh, what's his name? The, the one that, that, that was in War Games. Um, uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew Broadway. Matthew Broadway. Yeah, I mean, oh, right. not in prison. Anyways, <clears throat> well, well, I mean, but but she had some of those that were in there, and now the comedians are just afraid. I'll, I'll be honest; I could only watch it once, but I found it funny. The the one time we did watch it was Scary Movie. Oh you know, god, movie? that movie was so fucking dumb. I couldn't I couldn't sit through it. it. It was well. It was so horrible. I'm like, look, I, I laughed my head off, but I can't watch it again just because it. <laughs> oh, then I mean, there's been very few movies out there that I paid. To see, I've seen a lot of movies in theater, but yeah, oh, I don't very, know. Man. James Wood was classic in that. Uh but uh, what movie was it? My friend Jade, who's like, we're gonna go see a movie, and he's like, your turn to pick, and somehow he picks uh, Meet the Spartans. Okay. 
And midway through, I was like, I want my money back. He's like, what? I'm like, this movie fucking blows. I just, I didn't appreciate, I just, I don't get me wrong. I love crude humor. I love lowbrow humor. I love humor for the sake of being humor. But that movie was so fucking dumb. Scary movie one was all right. I'll give you that. Scary movie one was all right. The one was, but when it got into the third or fourth one, I'm like, why? Why are they still making these movies? And the quick answer is because they make money. Well, well, the National Lampoon. And they were easy to write. They were easy to write. And it was, you know, th- those are some of the last attempts at that kind of, you know, humor in a movie. I mean, you really have to think back over the years, that, you know, especially the last five years. I can't think of one, not one movie commercial that I saw of an actual funny movie. I'm trying to think back for the last 10 years. You know, you're right. I was going through because I'm, I'm, I'm going back. I'm like, okay, a lot of these were in the 80s. I still love John Candy, even though some of his movies. Oh, were man, may his soul rest in peace. Oh, uh, well, the planes, trains, and automobiles. Oh, yeah. I'm buying, laughing, the whole point where he turns to him and he sees Satan as they're driving. You know, it's like, you know, part of it is just. Oh, like, Chris I, Farley. Uh, yeah, Farley. hell, even the vacation movies. Yes. You know? But. It, I can't remember who it was, but one of the actors, if it wasn't uh, Chevy Chase, Chevy Chase is an asshole. Uh, if it wasn't Chevy Chase, it was somebody else. I can't remember who it was. But uh, one of the actors says the only way they would be willing to do the European uh, ver- the European one was if they had a ticket home in their pocket at all times. Uh, what's, what's, what's another one I'm thinking of? You know, the the... You know, I watched some of the Adam Sandler. And Adam Sandler Space balls. Uh, I, I, some of them I kind of enjoyed, but I, you know, like I didn't mind Fifty First Dates. I thought that was kind of cute. You um, know, they're actually using that movie in, in uh, for therapy for certain people. Good God! I, I, but the problem I have too much is when they over. You know, it was like, all right, this just seems dumb. But you're right. I enjoyed looking at some of them, which I have some of the dark humor. Like I liked Pulp Fiction. But it was slow. Oh, the- that's one of my. That's like that. that believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, Omen, yeah. My mom and I used to watch that movie every Sunday for like I want to say at least five years. That was a part of our Sunday ritual. That movie Pulp was Fiction. so high on. Was so yeah. My mom With and I. Chris was John Travolta. Uh, yes, yes yeah. it is one of my top ten favorite movies of all time. See, what kills certain people? I've never seen the Reservoir Dogs. I've I've yet to see it. That that is a hard movie to watch if you if you don't like blood. It is the bloodiest blood. movie I've ever. It it's is just, just it's, oh my god, that's an intense a, fucking movie. There's a character in that movie I could compare to a lot by uh, one of my friends, one of my closer friends up here. Um, he said there's technically two depends on your mood. He's like first the first one is pink. Nice guy, Eddie. Oh. Mr. Pink, because the whole he spilled about not paying waitresses. I always tip my waitresses. I I, I disagree with the whole part because he showed me the clip. I'm like, I disagree with that. He's like, yeah, but the way he's an asshole, that's kind of you. I'm like, fuck off. Uh, and I am vindictive to a sense to, towards certain people. Mm-hmm. And there's something about singing in the rain and beating the shit mm-hmm. out of somebody. No, no, catch in the middle with you. Jimmy. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, my, 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 uh, Michael Marsden, I think. Yeah. I was like, here I am stuck in the middle with you. And every time I hear that song, it just sort of, when somebody says, well, I'm stuck here with this and this, and I'm like in the middle here with you and I sing it and momentarily, I don't know. I need to watch it. It's, it's on what it's on a few different platforms. So it won't be up that hard to uh, figure out. How yeah. I've got it on DVD. You know, you know the- um, another, another one. Uh, it's not really a comedy, but another one of my favorites along those lines was Fight Club. Uh, to this day, yeah. it's still also in my top ten favorite movies of all time. Oh, um, I, 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 but, I, Fight Club. What's the? You no, know, there's another one I like with the Coen Brothers. With the um, oh, there are two of them by the Coen Brothers. What's one? Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? I enjoyed that. I one. like that. Yeah, one. I didn't. I, I really didn't like that movie at all. Um, I, but I, I hate George Clooney with a passion, so that's probably It was why. a retelling of The Odyssey. 
it was somewhat, but I liked the music and I enjoyed. Oh music. yeah, I, 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 I am a man of constant sorrow. Well, yeah. all, I, all I can think is, you know, when they talk about, you know, what kind of music do you play? We play all kinds, you know, or we play both of them, you know, both country and, you know, the blues Western. brothers. Were talking about yeah, them. yeah, we play both country and western. No, it was the other one, which was um, the one with Jeff Bridges, the. Um, Tron? Oh, the Big Lebowski. Oh, I love that. Oh, movie. that's a good movie. That's a good movie. Shut up, Steve. You're out of your depth. Yeah, uh, yeah. The Jesus. Oh, that was Donnie. Don? Was it Donnie? Yeah. I it was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was Donnie. You're right. The dude uh, abides. Yeah. Uh, Sam <laughs> Elliott's in that movie playing a cowboy. Weird ass entrance, but it was a really good movie. You, you know, another movie I liked, which was somewhat the it's somewhat comedic, is. Um, Thank you for not. No, thank you for smoking. That movie is rough. I love Thank You for Smoking. Never even heard of it. Oh God! It, um, the guy who played Two Face and the Christian Bale's Batman plays the main actor in it, and he works for a tobacco company. Oh, he, he goes around. He's basically a spin doctor, and he goes around. If I'm remembering the movie correctly, he's basically a spin yeah. doctor, where he talks. God, it's been fucking forever. He, Am he's I a lobbyist for 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 cigarettes? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it yeah, sounds yeah, vaguely yeah. familiar, and I might have seen it, but it's, it's probably been a long time. It but, came out in early two thousands, I think. It, it did, but see, one of the things I left is the very beginning where he goes off into like the Jerry Springer, and just the sheer balls on it when he goes over, and they're all yelling and screaming about how he wants his first daddy. He says, "We don't want to kill off our customers." Now, this guy who's anti smoking, he says. He wants this poor kid to die. <laughs> swear, oh my God, that took some balls to say that. Yeah. Oh, that was, yeah. yeah, you're right. It's been forever since I've seen that movie. Um, you ever seen the Christian Slater movie, Pump Up the Volume? I haven't seen Pump Up the Volume. I saw Heather. Yeah, before. that's been a long time. I, I preferred him in uh, Heather's. I actually preferred him in Robin Hood. I don't even remember him in Robin Hood. I, I don't think I've seen Robin Hood. Before. Robin Hood with Kevin Costner was absolutely a horrible movie. It came out with a halfway decent soundtrack, but you know, a lot of good actors, just a horrible fucking movie. It, it, it happened. Sam, uh, 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 um, Christian Slater plays uh, Scarlet. Will Scarlet. Will Scarlet. Scarlet. And there's a scene I'm where not a very bad. Uh, there's a scene where uh, uh, Morgan Freeman's character and uh, Kurt Russell, who's playing Robin Hood, which was a fucking error and mistake. Anyways, we're it's at the end of the movie, and they, they stand on a co um, catapult, and they have to get over this wall. And they figured using this would be a good, you know, good way to do it. And the most accurate line in the entire movie for that time period was when Christian there pulls the uh, lover back, and they right over the gate. He's like, fuck me. They made it. And it's the movie is a horrible movie, but I I love that one line from that movie. I, I you know what I don't think and not that I've seen a lot of movies, but you know what I, I'll watch them if they come on, you know, one of the, you know, Amazon or something like that. Yeah. I can't think of <clears throat> the problem is in some cases the writers aren't very good. Now they're afraid of offending everyone, which I'm like, that's what makes the best comedy is when you offend everybody. And oh, God. Yeah, but yeah. I, 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 just, I, I just think that... Um, what was yeah, that one watching? There were, a few, there were a few I enjoyed, but they're all pretty much gone. Cartoons the only thing about left, where they're not afraid of offending everyone. Um, oh, no, there's a show. There's a show on... Um... Uh, Paramount. Uh, it's, I don't think it's on their uh, on their um, their app though. Unfortunately, it's called Yellowstone. Mm. Uh, yeah, Bruce, that was a Bruce talked highly about that one. That movie basically gives a finger to everybody's feelings and tells a really good story. Oh, Deadpool! I enjoyed Deadpool. Oh, Deadpool! Yeah, yeah. Is Deadpool? Is it? A I mean, it is somewhat of a comedy, sort of. Yeah, it's, it's trying. It's trying real hard for a Marvel movie. It, it, well, to me, it was hilarious. The first one, the second one was eh, but but yeah, the first one I really thought was pretty hilarious. Um, yeah. Oh. Well, it's got what? my girlfriend in it, so that's cool. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know what to tell you about there, Haas. You should watch her in Gotham. I, I like her in Gotham. Well, my favorite's still Firefly. That's where I thought she was the best. Uh, uh, it's definitely when she was the youngest. I, hell, I'll watch her in, in V. She, you know, with that buzz cut, I'll watch her in that too. I'm old fashioned. I want long hair. Damn it. <laughs> I, 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 you know, when I was younger, my uh, my rules of dating is they have to have longer hair than I do. They have to be able to fit loosely into my pants. Um, <laughs> you know. There's a few other ones that are just kind of just dumb, asshole ish, honestly. But, you know, we all have a physical type that we're looking for, especially when you're younger. I mean, I, to be fair, ideally, 5'10 or above. Uh, slim oh, man, I, I don't care if they're taller than me or shorter than me. I actually, you know, I find I, tall women to be kind of hot. Uh, I, want de- I want death by schnoo schnoo. Um, I'm just tired of trying well, to. Get no. I, 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 look, if I have to put someone on a curb or I have to put them up on a, a stair to kiss them, I'm getting tired of that. I like something no, I can my, just grab and kiss right there. <laughs> my ex-wife was short. Uh, short and, I mean... No, I, I learned a long time ago. Um, it's a biological thing. If they don't look physically up to you, they don't get that father-daughter sort of weird thing going on, and they don't have that blood rushing to the back of their head from having to tilt their head up a certain way. It, it's just, it's just, uh, it just doesn't work out. I, I dated this girl that was six, three. The only thing that killed that relationship was, was she was uh, finishing up college and I was like, on oh, my second year and she was moving back uh, out West. That was what killed that relationship. It wasn't anything else. I, I well, I mean, at the end of the day is like, I just found it easier, you know, but, but at the, but yeah, you, to be fair, I'm still a few inches taller, even if they're six foot. So, so oh, I I'm five, five. I'm every bit of five, nine. Um, that's on a good day anymore. I seem to slouch more and more because <laughs> I hurt. Um, I don't know. Tall girls, you know, t- I, I, I like them tall. I like them short. I like, I just, anymore, it's personality and conversation skills that really say <clears throat> for me anymore. Um, I don't know. I'm less picky as I've gotten older, I guess. I've, I've become both more picky and somewhat less. Actually, I've <laughs> more, actually, I've become more picky for personality. Yeah. And, and, and right now, it's just, you know, not that. I, I just like, is it, how much stress will it be? Like, and, you know, to be fair, I'd rather put that effort into my son. So, like, you know what? I, he, if I'm going to put all that effort out, I'd rather put that effort out for my son. And I'm just, most women nowadays do not bring much to the table other than looks. I'm like, well. Well, you know, they, they do bring something to the table. Uh, uh, headaches? The, uh, the, uh, the uh, divorce court, uh, Lawyers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Until that just changes, uh, the the birth rate is gonna keep on plummeting. Well, yeah. I was reading somewhere that we plateaued actually a couple of years ago. Uh, oh no, we we are on a steady decline right now. Whenever I hear people saying that they have too many kids, I said the, the, the growth in age is because people are not dying at the... Oh, we're world. living longer than we've ever lived before. I mean, it's... And I don't know who originally said this, but I've heard it from multiple different people that uh, it is to be it is said that somebody of this generation, of my generation, or maybe my kid's generation, sometimes someone who is living today with all the uh, health and everything else, advancements in our culture will live basically forever. And I'm like, I hope it's not me. I well, you know, I don't think that's possible. Nor do I think it's something anybody should wish to achieve. I think it is possible, and not forever. But I think we will be starting pushing the upper hundreds by the time you know my daughter is mine or Shadow's age, because of the advancement in health that we're. We're hitting. The only thing that's really going to knock us off the board is a huge war or something nuclear. Other so, than that, that's about it. 
So I, I you know, I thought it was very interesting. So we came back, you know, you know, I guess it was in June, and my my ex's, I, I won't call my my son's surrogate grandparents. There's a family friend of of my ex's, um, who are old enough to be her her parents. Anyway, they love having my son over, and so we went to go visit them, and they had their 95 year old mother, and Carol went over and said, and this is my mother who's 95, and the first words out of her mouth were. No one should live this long, and it was. Kind of, wow. I was like, "Holy crap!" And my mother's talking because my mother's in her seventies now. She's talking, saying a lot of her friends that are in their eighties and nineties are like, "It's time for me to go," and and so I think that's going to be a big thing. I saw somewhere that and this well, is what I find horrifying. Go ahead, sorry, Shadow. If, if we think for one second that anybody but the absolute wealthiest, richest politicians and and you know movers and shakers are going to get that immortality. You guys are fucking smoking something incredibly, you know, hey, powerful. Because when, when, that when, when that technology comes into, into existence, only oh, yeah. the rich and powerful are going to get it. Us plebes will never even know it exists. I honestly think it already does exist because if you look at the congressman from uh, Kentucky, uh, Mitch, he looks like he's like at least two hundred. Oh, oh, I mean, Mitch McConnell. You know, yeah, granted, he also looks like a turtle. Yeah, uh, cocaine look, Mitch. Yeah, yeah, he does. Wait, 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 wait. Look, look at Henry Kissinger. The the price of immortality is becoming a frog. Oh God, is he still even alive? Yes, Henry Kissinger is still alive, and he gets smaller and smaller. He starts looking like Mister Toad, you know, oh, from Mister Toad's Wild. You mean Life. Yoda? You mean because you know you know Yoda started out six foot. <laughs> he came out in what the Reagan era? No, no, no. He goes all the way back to um, Kissinger. Does he really? I'm uh, sorry, sorry. Kissinger goes back to uh, not not that. It's, it goes back to uh, I Nixon or before Nixon. I, he probably predates Nixon as well. But yeah, that is it, just it, one angry Jew. It, it's well. Here's the thing, though, is. I saw him, and, and I didn't realize just how tiny he was. But oh, they yeah. have the security. And that's why I said when you look at him, he looks like Mr. Toad. Anyone remembers the, the Mr. Oh, Toad? Yeah. Mr. Toad and Mr. Frog, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He looks just like that because, you know, they become more and more hunched, and they get all decrepit. I'm like, and I think that's what happens to every old person because my grandmother started looking like that. At a certain point, sex doesn't matter when you're that old. You just become a shriveled up frog. And I'm not trying, and I love my grandmother dearly, but that's what she became near the end of her life. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm going I'm gonna head out because I gotta get up at five. Right? Yeah, I gotta get going myself. Uh, um, yeah, the little guy's got school. If he's not already passed out. All right. Well, I'm, I'm still here. I'm not falling asleep on camera ever again. Oh, give it time. When You'll fall, happen? Bruce. You just fall asleep. I've already feet. pulled a Bruce more than he'd ever did. Well, well, Bruce, Bruce was snoring. That was the funniest part. <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay, uh, I may have done it more. I, I've done it twice. He's only done it once. But never oh, as bad no, 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 as no. he ever did. See, the problem is, is, yeah, you fell asleep the other night, but you weren't snoring. And you didn't leave your <laughs> camera on. <laughs> Uh, that would have been hysterical. That would have, <laughs> we would have had to clip that and, and, and frame it. All right. Well, you take care, guys. Have a good night. You take, you take it have easy. Have a good week. Call oh, in. We'll see you soon. All, All right. Bye. 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 Have a good one. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys both. Uh, Omenow, I'll thank you later. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up in chat. Thank you, too, for showing up. Here, um, next Sunday, we'll be on schedule unless something uh, pops in. We will yep. do be talking about Blade Runner and the different Probably variations. Transhumanism too. Yes. Yeah. We will be joined by Jack, Mark. Shadow, Mark, and Omenow while we're talking about that. So, everybody who's watched this a little bit later on, you all have a pleasant day. And um, I'll see you when I see you. Thank you, too, once again for showing up. Good night, everybody. Good night. Talk to you soon. Bye.